Yo, another zombie. How's it going? Hello. Alright. Don't mind me as I uh, am getting things good to go. Um, cool, 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 cool. Not too bad, my guy. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, uh, let's just look at what's on the agenda today. Well, we're going to talk about traps. Putting uh, your, you know, mechanical, magical, maybe, I don't know. Um, as was Boo's suggestion last week. But uh, let, me just, let me just do the intro uh, real quick, just for uh, the sake of continuity, I suppose. Not continuity whatever i don't know anyway welcome back to table talk discussion and discourse i as always am your host alejo aka great on 95 uh it is just me um for at least a half an hour um if not more we will see sounds good can't wait good to hear um we will see how long that uh that goes big fan of boo back in the day a lot of people were yeah a lot of people are still um but uh yeah so until uh boo gets here because he's gonna be uh here later on it will just be me unfortunately but that's okay um so let us start uh as we usually do uh and go over some comments uh we only got two comments so, let me just pull those up real quick. There we are. Um, we got two comments, both from Lux. Um, unless, let me actually just check one little thing before I do that, in case another comment was posted before I looked. Nope. Cool, we're good. Um, so... Uh, Lux commented on uh, a couple of our videos last week's and uh, episode 46 when we looked at the uh, the response video that Taking 20 did to his opinion and the backlash that he got. Um, so we'll start with that first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just take a drink here before we start. All right. So... Lux says, <clears throat> I believe he might have actually used illusion of choice correctly in this episode once. I should have gone back to listen to what he was talking about again, but I did hear him say something uh, players could choose between didn't matter. He did, I think he did say that, but he was talking about um, the combat stuff, but regardless. Um, so I'll give him credit for that one correct usage of the term. But he still went through the last episode equating the existence of an optimal choice to an illusion of choice. So he's still using it incorrectly there. True. Very true. Actually, let me just... One other thing. Hold on. This one, I don't need to change anything. I just need to look. All right, we're good. Cool. We're good. Hey, Slay. Yeah, it was the combat stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was... Uh, that's at least what my memory is. Um, but anyway, so, um, other than that, you can't tell me a DM can't come up with a way to make battles dynamic in any system. Very true. Okay, so maybe it is optimal to refine a specific form of combat to the most extreme degree possible. Maybe the players will ultimately always get the best results from using the same set of abilities every time they get to attack. I can still make sure they have to work to get into an advantageous position to actually use those abilities. I can make sure any given character is asked uh, the question of, is this the square I want to end my turn on? I don't care what the system is, I can make my players think about how they want to move around and what they should be doing with their actions. Always saying, how can I do the most damage, is not going to win the battle for you every time. Evil finds a way. True. Rangers. Yes, it was about the Ranger stuff. You're right. Um, so he reclaims... Oh, sorry. He claims his point 
uh, was that combat in Pathfinder 2e is no better than combat in D&D 5e. So he has no reason to play Pathfinder instead of D&D. All right, first of all, he should say for him. True. I'll grant it doesn't seem like he can figure out how to run combat well in Pathfinder. <laughs> I think it's for the lack of trying, uh, but sure, we'll just say he's not interested. That means that for him personally, 5e is the better system. But his lack of interest in learning how to use a system uh, effectively is on him. It's not the system's fault uh, that he didn't put it, that effort in. He couldn't say he's too busy, doesn't have time, whatever. Those reasons are external to the system. Yes. Uh, if he absolutely had to announce to the world that he was quitting Pathfinder, he could have at least admitted clearly that his reasons were subjective. If he really still likes Paizo as a company and wants them to succeed, then he should have made sure... Uh, the way he wrote his video wouldn't be harmful to their product. Um, I wouldn't say, first off, I wouldn't say that you, like, if you like a company, that doesn't mean that you can't shit on something that they do, right? Um, obviously, the way that he did it wasn't in a way that was um, very, uh, what's it called? Uh... It wasn't the best way for him to do it. Um, most The most uh, honest, I guess. Not honest, but I don't know what the right word is. It just wasn't, wasn't the way that you should do it. Um, but um, I would say that, like, if it's, if it's, if it's something like, um, say there's a movie that came out and people don't like it, and other people haven't seen it, and they look for that, like, review or something, you could still shit on a movie that isn't good, um, and thus do quote-unquote harm to it, which, it's, you're gonna be fine. The, whatever they're, they're doing is gonna be fine. Like, your opinion isn't gonna do shit about it, probably. Um, the people who are gonna see it who are gonna see it anyway. Um, but you could quote unquote do harm to a product or something. Like, the other thing is, like, let's... <laughs> Let's not, I don't, I don't know, it's just, it's weird to me to, to say, like, be harmful to their product. It's like, uh, the company is going to be fine regardless of you. I'm pretty sure, right? Um, I don't know, it's just weird. Uh, he should have gone out of his way to make sure of that. I don't think so. I, I think he's, he's fine in expressing his opinion in whatever way he sees fit. It's just that he was wrong, right? Don't don't be wrong <laughs> um but he couldn't be bothered to do that so he brought that backlash upon himself that is also true uh and i have no sympathy the defensiveness he displayed in this video didn't win any points with me either that's fair that's absolutely fair um some of what i'm saying here is overlapping with things that have already been said and i'll refrain from saying some of the things i feel like saying but this is the position i want to express that should cover it sure yeah absolutely and like i'm not saying like you're wrong in what you're saying here like i think I think he definitely did do this in a harmful way. It wasn't great. Um, but I don't know, like, in in general, I would say, like, you can say whatever you want about a company. Like, if, remember when people were talking about um, Cyberpunk 2077 and how shit it was? <laughs> in the sense of it being undercooked. Uh, needs to go back in the oven there, boyo. You know? Um, which, I mean... They're perfectly reasonable too, and I I feel like they should have already figured it out when they had to pre-order a game that wasn't even done yet. But y you know, whatever they had faith in the company, whatever that's fine. Um, but even so, it, it's one of those things where people can can say what they want. They just have to not be wrong, you know. Anyway, uh, your other comment on last week's uh, episode, performing puzzles. Uh, says, a couple of things I can say before I attempt to sleep. Not going to succeed, even though I'm running on fumes and the lingering effects of an energy drink right now, but I'll make the attempt. Fair enough. I feel that. Um, my comment on dungeon design last week might have lost sight of the forest for the trees, but what I'm basically saying is, if I have an intelligent group of enemies in a dungeon, they're going to act like an organized group of intelligent people. So if the party openly attacks the lair, they're going not going to be waiting in static positions, coming to life only when the party enters the room they're in. Oh, okay, fair, yeah. Uh, the group will have procedures for dealing with intruders. If the party doesn't successfully employ some kind of strategy to get in and out of the dungeon without letting the alarm be sounded... Those procedures are going to activate 
and the party will have to deal with the entire defending forces effort to defeat them. That is fair. Um, he hyped up Pathfinder 2 in that one video that I think the two other videos were massive overcorrection. Oh, that might be the case. Sure. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, his, uh, that's the comparing, uh, 5e to 2e, uh, Pathfinder 2e. And in that video, I thought it was fine. Again, he got a couple of things wrong, but I thought it was fine. Like, it was one of those videos that I was actually, like, okay with. Hey, Duratier! I am here, been way too long. Good to see ya. Welcome back. Anyway. Um, in effect, it's basically going to look a lot like an XCOM mission. Except, of course, instead of an AI controlling enemies, their actions will be directed by a being of truly unfathomable, unfathomable evil. The words hidden movement are going to be said quite a bit. Hmm. Um, also, yeah, there would be some inver universe means by which the party's presence would be announced to the rest of the enemies upon their detection. If they barreled in heedlessly, odds are the party wouldn't, won't have seen it, but it's there. Yeah, fair. Okay. They could theoretically have detected and disabled it, or otherwise avoided activating it, but that would have required a more suitable method of entry. The evil overlord designs his lair's defen defenses to stop the heroes from getting in and beating him, not to facilitate his own defeat. That is true. People don't seem to remember that. Traps and, and dungeon designs are there. Well, not necessarily they're there to keep you out. It depends on if it's the lair or if it's like a dungeon, right? Quote unquote, a um place that people are allowed to come into for some means. Because like some dungeons could be there as a trap, like as something that people could um stumble in and then get trapped in forever and then the guy takes their shit you know but anyway i know what you mean you're good um but, 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 but. that being said i am of the opinion that four low level characters should not be able to bring down anything on the level of a fully manned castle through open assault on their own and i would be prone to agree with you um, something smaller and less heavily defended, sure, but a large purpose uh, built defensive structure shouldn't fold for them. If something they want to do requires them to infiltrate something like that, they'll need to be smarter about it. Oh, absolutely. I'm 100% with you. Uh, openly attacking a fortress without the levels and access to some crazy magic to make realistic success possible is a bad decision to which the logical consequences should apply. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, and I'm sure you're aware of um if they start using things creatively and they actually do their roles properly and you know other kinds of things that they could potentially do something right like it's not going to be a you're destined to fail there is a chance i guess of success but it's very 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 difficult anyway um I guess we're past the Cody saga now. Truly the cinematic event of the decade, but I've said all I need to say about that. My one regret is that I never got to call him cozy. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, we, we haven't cared to look at any of his... Has he even released a video as of late? I haven't gotten it in any of my recommended for the channel. So I don't actually know. And even if I, honestly, his videos, like thumbnails look very similar to a lot of others. So I don't know. Um, anyway. Uh, reminding me of the boiling tar pit from Kingmaker. No step stones, rope lines or anything. Just around 80 by 80 room full of hot tar. Oh, hell yeah. That's great. Um, Tomb of Horrors is a nice trap dungeon. Yeah, there's also that. Yeah. Um... It, uh, yeah, I well, we'll we'll get to traps. Don't worry. Anyway, on the subject of mechanical puzzles, uh, my brain doesn't really do that, unfortunately. Maybe an easy puzzle for children I could handle, but anything designed to be challenging for adults is going to lose me. I'm a natural blonde. I all I know is sweep the leg, raiding the coastal villages of Europe, and all such activities as de derive as derived thence. My brain is delicate and smooth like the finest porcelain. <laughs> also, I do like to reward players for actually having points invested in brain. A puzzle box is something I would just let a character solve with their stats. The kind of puzzle I would make for players is a bit larger in scale. The puzzle box might contain a key for a door, uh, to a door, and finding that door might be the real puzzle. Maybe the pizza puzzle box, I almost said pizza box, wow. A uh, puzzle box contains a gem, and you've seen a statue somewhere with its that was missing its eyes. And that's fair, yeah. Of course, the value of the gem is not beyond the value of a reward I was intending, intent on giving you. 
Uh, I'd fully expect someone to pry it back out of the statue and sell it. It wouldn't have surprised me if they just failed to connect the dots and went straight to selling the gem as soon as they found it. If the, there are two concepts my brand understands, it's plunder and thoughtlessness. Nice. Um, and finally, remember that time Ray used Force Lightning? It's not related to anything, I just thought I'd bring it up. Don't make me upset, dude. Yes, I remember that. It's so fucking stupid. God, it's so bad. Anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> thank you for the comments. Um, true, but some of those traps are broken, like the roller trap room that instantly kills you if you let it happen. Yeah, um, apparently there are some things in Tomb of Horrors that aren't great. Um, apparently? I don't know. Um, one day we'll look at, um, maybe we'll look at the, um, it was, in, it was intended for a guest at some point, uh, but it was the... The video that XP to level 3 did on the worst dungeon and fixing it, which I just wanted to see, um, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll look at it in the future. It was intended for a guest, but the guest never got back in touch, so, um, anyway. Um, he seems to be a top 10 listener now, latest video, most broken spells in D&D 5e. Oh, a top 10 listener, gotcha. Yeah, uh, if that's the case, he always kind of was in, on occasion. If he's taking the same steps as Dungeon Dudes, whereas, like, I hope it's still not, like, 15 minutes then. Because the Dungeon Dudes, at least, like, with their lists, they at least go somewhat in-depth, you know? Um... Yeah, I love that video. You should do that video because it's a great breakdown of, on the dungeon from its encounters, puzzles, and traps. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well. Well. Uh, it's it is on the docket at some point. You know. Um. There are videos on the docket, but we'll get to them when we get to them. You know. Anyway. <clears throat> excuse me. Gygax made it for monkey monkey <laughs> gamers. Yeah. Yeah. No. I know. It was. It was definitely. It was a grind heavy dungeon. So, like nowadays, it's not technically the best dungeon because D D has evolved past um uh what is it just being like uh grinders basically in, in games or in the in your uh in your campaigns i mean it, you still could run that absolutely like there's nothing stopping you of course but um i think D, &D has evolved from just being you go in the dungeon and now you die <laughs> you know anyway so moving on obs tells me that my encoder is like overloading every two seconds which is really fun but uh, we ignore it every time and we go hey we're gonna be talking about um traps today um crazy cool i don't know traps um well if you hate your player it's true um crazy traps that i don't know we'll see um the the purpose of this is just to make traps better unfortunately boo is not going to be here for a little while even though he was the one who requested it but that's okay hey pizza funk how's it going um so uh traps um traps are something that i don't use very often um in the same in my example that i that i did um last week where I talked about how I randomly got that donjon dungeon uh, d randomized for me and used the stuck doors in it. I did use a couple of traps that it had also suggested um, that it had randomly generated. Um, and I flavored them to, to make more sense for what that place um, revealed. Um, like, there was one that was... Um, I think it was like some sort of mirror or some sort of tapestry or something that that was enchanted to move and showed a depiction of a battle, right? And in it, uh, using it, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a depiction of um, 
dwarves fighting off uh, a drow and kind of keeping them from passing through uh, the, like, th out of the Underdark and into this, um, this place that they had garrisoned here, you know, and, like, uh, and it was something that if you got, uh, if you didn't pass the, what was it? I think it was a will save or something, or, sorry, um, yeah, yeah, no, it was a will save. Um, because we were, I know we weren't using three point five, so it was a wisdom save or something. But regardless, um, if you didn't pass it, you got mesmerized and were watching it, and then a axe came down and uh, fucking sliced at you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, nice. Um, so I used that you know, reflavored it with that little bit of lore, um, for the world, and, uh, it did get somebody, that was fun, um, but other things like spike traps or, like, uh, a door that leads to a room that has, uh, it had, like, a, a small thing in it, but it did have, like, a, um, a crossbow that, uh, would go off, and, like, to be fair, because I used these randomly generated traps, they didn't really work very well, to be to be fair. Like, if you thought about it, like, wh why is that still working? This place has not been found for so long or something, you know. Um, in context, if you thought about it, it didn't really work. So, um, I kind of regret using it now, just because it, it I didn't, you know, make it make sense. But, anyway. Um, so, that's, that's kind of the only bits of traps that I used. Occasionally... Let's see, I think I occasionally did some, like, monster, um, like, things that would make monsters aware, but that's about it. There's not really much in the way of traps that I've used. The only other campaign campaign that I ran for a while was Expedition to Castle Ravenloft in 3.5, and that one has its own traps in it, and we also used, um, Hero Heroes of Horror, which, um, adds the taint system um, it's another book in, in 3.5, Heroes of Horror, um, but it, it's one that you can use that adds the taint system, and they even recommend it in, or, or they, they give it as an option in, uh, Expedition to Castle Ravenloft, and so we did that, and, uh, it barely came into play, but when it did, it was kind of fun, um, and I actually, this is off topic, because now I'm thinking about it, but I actually did buy the, um, Curse of Strahd book, because, one, it was the only copy there that wasn't revamped. It wasn't the, the, uh, <laughs> the touched up version, quote unquote, right? It wasn't the, the, the one that they have, uh, revised, I hope. Um, because the revamped ones, I think, are those. They're the ones inside of the, the big coffin box. Which, by the way, looks fucking awesome. And I was really tempted but then I was like, I don't want to support that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I bought, I bought the old copy, um, which still technically supports them, I guess. But it was at a, um, it was at a Barnes and Noble, so that I went to the other day. Um, so I don't know how much uh, wizards actually would get for that if they get anything. I don't actually know. Anyway, um, so I'm excited to actually read that and go through it because Expedition was my favorite module, like because it was my first module, but also it's, it's, like, it's so cool, it's so much fun, I don't know, 3.5's Expedition to Castle Ravenloft, great, if I read this and I don't get the same vibes, I'll be sad, <laughs> anyway, um, not really a trap, but I remember in one Pathfinder adventure had this horrible fey monster called a sword in it, looks like a dead tree, but it's alive, bleeds lightning and hates everything, that sounds awesome, um, see, funny thing was, it was more deadly than the endgame boss. No idea why it was there, and led to a lot of jokes that even the Storm Giants were scared of it. I love that. That's great. That's super fun. Um, but yeah, so. Oh, by the way, um, we're not sponsored or anything, but I do want to say, um, if you haven't seen, and I'll tweet it out, actually, after the probably tomorrow, um, the, uh, Humble Bundle, and I'll actually, I'll pull it up right now as well, um, Humble Bundle 
is doing a uh, Starfinder bundle that gets you uh, for like 50 bucks. Um, you can get 55 bucks now. Uh, no, no, pay at least 50 for 38 items. Okay, hang on. Um, this is this is important. Like, I think this is a great thing that you should, if you have the capital, do consider. Um, but Paizo put out the Starfinder book bundle on Humble Bundle that has the hardcover, um, packed worlds, the, the beginner box itself, a PDF of the beginner box, a PDF of the packed worlds, um, all these kinds of things, um, that you can get, and that's like a fraction of the cost, right? So, if you have... If you have 50 bucks, like, consider it. If you don't have 50 bucks, well, you could pay, like, 5 bucks and still get, um, a bunch of stuff. The core rule book, you know, player stuff. Like, le legitimately, this is, this is great. Um, so do consider, do consider it, uh, because stuff like this is great. I don't know. Last time, it was the, the Pathfinder 2e thing. Um, which I bought, and I will buy this. I don't have the money right now. I kind of spent a little too much when I went out and got uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill and uh, Curse of Strahd <laughs> a while ago. So, but anyway, I just wanted to make that aware. Um, this lasts another, at the time of recording, uh, this lasts another 15 days. So, and today is the 3rd of August uh 2021 so if you're in the future i'm sorry um if you're way past the 15 days i'm sorry but if you're not think about it uh it's cool it's very cool so anyway my brain is is not keeping on track i apologize um but there we go okay cool I thought about that bundle, but also about to drop a bunch on the Chronicles of Drunagor expansion campaign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, do whatever you want, obviously. I'm just saying, that's a thing, you know? Um, <laughs> Hell, I was, I was going to buy more Warhammer. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm one to talk, right? I I actually did. I bought um Necron data cards so I can have those. Uh they're coming in uh tomorrow, uh, hopefully. <laughs> Cuz I wanted them. So <laughs> it was only like 30 bucks, but the, let's not talk about it. Okay. Anyway, I'm not obsessed. Um so today we are talking about traps. Let us move over to the video. Um Boo will probably come in uh in about 10 minutes or so, so we'll see how far we get in before he gets here. But, um, this is, uh, our good old friend Guy, um, can never have enough war Warhammer. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> I have a problem. Uh, so this is, uh, how to be a great GM. Good old Guy saying, uh, this is great GM creating and using traps in your RPG session overview, Game Master Tips, GM Tips. Um, so on traps, one simple but lethal one I had used was a delayed fireball spell on a big doorway. The door is so heavy that the whole group bunches up to open it only for the fireball to blow up. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, obviously the, let's, let's talk about really quick, the purpose of traps, right? Um, the, what I assume at least in my brain, the purpose of a trap to do to your players is to make them spend resources somehow right whether that be spell slots health um items um you know any of that kind of stuff i feel like that is what a trap is for you want to soften them up a little bit more before they get to their big fights or whatever you got in your dungeon or whatever you got in your encounter you know um you soften them up with traps because not everybody's going to pass a trap, obviously. Um, or they might even, and then they're fine. And you know what? At that point, you're just like, oh, shit, I threw everything at you, and you're fine. Fight the boss, be okay, you know? Um, but it's also, I think, something that can be used to really make 
your players think more critically about how they interact with the world, it really depends, right? Because if your players encounter, um, oh, let's say there is, let's go with, well, let's go with straight up, uh, pit of spikes, right? Classic trap, um, absolutely classic trap. Um, they, they come across a pit of spikes. Um, maybe somebody's fallen in, maybe somebody hasn't. Um, regardless of that, after they've dealt with the fact that they have found this pit of spikes, how do they get past it, right? Um, if they don't want to spend a spell slot, they might find some interesting way to take, um, rope and an arrow or a bolt and try to stick it into, uh, the ceiling so they can swing across, or... They want to maybe um, use a potion of spider climb to climb across the walls, um, or they want to try to throw people across, you know? Like, there are many ways to get past this trap, as long as, you know, there isn't, like, another pit of spikes uh, right on the other <laughs> side, I guess. Um which you could do, but it would be kind of obvious after they fall through one pit of spikes, you would see the next pit of spikes right there. But anyway, um, I, I think it's, a, it's an interesting way for them to kind of figure out, okay, because let's be honest, players don't want to use their spells right then and there. Um, at least as far as I'm aware, at least with my brain, I don't want to use my spell slot. Spells, spell slots. Thank you. Um, a spike pit within the spike pit. Ooh, you fall into a spike pit and then the spikes retract and you're like, oh, that's not so bad. And then it descends into another spike pit. 1d6 of damage and then 1d6 of damage from the spike. And then it falls. So you fall another 10 feet, 1d6 of damage and 1d6 of damage with the spike. Ah! <laughs> um, spikeception, exactly. Um, but uh, I think that it's perfectly natural for a lot of players to want to be very cagey about using their spells or really their items or anything in general. They want to save all this stuff up um, for uh, when they have to fight because fighting is the thing that happens in D&D &D, like all the time. Don't ever forget, it's a, it's a combat game, um, very much so. So having them try to come up with interesting ways to get past your trap um, I mean, like, let's say, oh, I just, <laughs> I just thought of something. Wait, I need to check a spell now. Um, this is, this is a way to use a spell spell. Um, but let me check the spell really quick. Uh, so I'm looking at Unseen Servant right now. Um, interesting. So, I'm wondering now, would you allow, and this is just a general question, would you allow if um, you had somebody that had Unseen Servant to use it like a springboard? <laughs> or some sort of, like, hurdle that you could use to just throw yourself, right? Um... So, well, this is the thing. It's not a, it's not an, uh, it's not a non-physical servant. It is an unseen servant. It is there. It does interact with things, right? Um, I'm not saying it would, like, do a pressure plate, right? It wouldn't do that kind of stuff, and it wouldn't trip, like, you know, a trip wire very easily, I would say. Um, it would have to go and pick it up and then drag it and then you like yeah, potentially right it, it's it's something for for argument's sake um also my chat is connected that's fun what is with youtube now what is with this chat successfully and unsuccessfully disconnecting if i don't see your shit um your message i apologize um do wait until you see it has reconnected i guess uh if you're watching anyway now it connects <laughs> so anyway so um but using the unseen servant as somewhat of a springboard to maybe have it like i don't know 
um, bend over so you can use it to jump across the pit or use it as a way to try to just like using it as a hurdle or something, um, using it as a physical object as well. Like it's a, I know it's a level one spell. Is it ritual? Actually, I don't actually remember. Let me check. Um, unseen servant IV. Uh, I don't think it's a ritual spell. Oh, it is. Wait, is that what that means? Hold on. Uh, that's D and D Beyond. It doesn't help me right now. Um, this is three point five. No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, so it is even a ritual spell. Um, so you could kind of use that. Well, that's the other thing. Um, time is also a valuable resource that you can take away from your players because of traps, right? Um, however, they are trying to figure it out. It's going to take time, and then you can have other things progress. You can have other things advance, right? Um, again. Traps are, in my mind, traps are used to take away resources from the party so that it makes them a little, uh, it makes it a little harder for them to continue to, to go through the dungeon and maybe they'll have to take a rest or something while they're inside, um, and risk being found by whatever is inside of, uh, the dungeon, right? Or whatever it is. Um, but yeah. So, with that all being out of the way, and my brain maybe continuing to be on one thought, we'll see. Uh, let's begin the video. Alright, my lord, so as you can see over there, and over there, and if you just crawl a little bit further down, on the plans over there we've got some pretty nasty traps set in to uh, destroy anybody who might happen to come in through the dungeon of course if you um, go back a little bit you'll see right up here at the top as they walk in there's that nasty little flame trap now don't you worry it's certified for operation for up to a thousand years or before your resident lich dies <laughs> well that's a little joke liches don't die well not easily anyway all right, so if you're happy with those plans, we can just approve the construction of these traps and we'll just move right along. Thank you very much. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. We are, of course, looking at traps and how to use them in your game and how to make the most out of them. Now, this is a potential um, series of videos where we look at different types of things around traps, but primarily this one is looking at the overview of traps and why you should use them. Now, I should point out that a trap is quite different from a riddle or a puzzle. Often traps will have riddles and puzzles with... <laughs> Often traps will have riddles and puzzles within them, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, a trap is about getting the player's characters into a situation that they need to get out of in some way before it kills them, ejects them, exterminates them, erases their memories, eats all of their armor, whatever the case might be. So the idea here is looking... Traps get a bad name. <laughs> I don't think traps need to be that dangerous, you know? I, like, yeah, it, the intent is for it to kill you, right? Like, that's... That's what a trap is there for. So it's not necessarily um, not going to do that given enough time. But um, if you're if you're at a point where you're um, high enough level that you can deal with the fact that you might die <laughs> in like a few minutes just because of a trap, like that's fine. For for like level ones, level two, level three, I feel like having them be more of an inconvenience, um, being more of a uh, again, a way to take away resources in such a way um, is better than having them be um, straight up kill traps, right? Like, make it so that you have those straight up kill traps for when they're like level 
six, level seven, you know, you start getting to that point because then they can deal with it better Then they, you know, they've had time and then they can have more of a sadness if they die to a trap. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Uh, perhaps the trapping question isn't even the dungeon in the dungeon. Maybe the party visits a village and thri that thrives on tourism only to find that the entire town is under hypnosis and they have to find a way out. Yeah. Absolutely. You could have it be that a trap, instead of being a dungeon laid uh, trap, is something that is um, just a part of what they're going to encounter. Like, uh, I think Aiden told us this story once, but there was, I think, a trap thing that he made. And I'm paraphrasing. It might be in an episode. It might not be. I, I don't remember. But... Um, he told us of a trap that he made where it was a crossroads and they a tourist trap if you will there you go thank you um he he said that the, he made a trap where um it was a crossroads and there was specific things that were happening around that would um basically hint the players to ha on to how to uh, escape the actual uh, crossroads trap because it would teleport you back to the crossroads like subtly right you would follow the path get to the crossroad take a take a uh, a turn and then it would bring you back to the crossroad um and there were subtle clues from the way that things were going around at the crossroad itself as to which way you could go uh that would you know make it so you could get to uh, get out of said uh, trap. Um, the other thing that I think what happened was that a player used to spell magic and they rolled real high and they got it, which, again, totally fine. Again, it takes away the spell slot and also they get the sense of accomplishment that they got through a trap, you know? Th that's another thing about traps is to make them something that is a sense of accomplishment, I think, right? Because... Well, by accomplishment, I mean once they've, you know, conquered the trap, hopefully. Um, when they go, whoo, glad we got out of that, you know? Um, and it's not necessarily going to be uh, a death trap. Could be something more brainy like the, the crossroad trap. If they go through it, if they remember, you know, if they start observing what's going on around them, if you start making it so it's obvious, quote unquote, once they're looking at things, once you've pointed out what things are happening... And then they start trying to piece it together. It becomes a puzzle trap in a way, you know. Um, it has that element of being a puzzle as well as a trap. Um, but it can also make them go, good. I'm glad I got out of that and I used my brain. Or I used my brain to make a spell. Or I used, you know, the items that I needed or something, right. Or I got a thing in the end because I did it in a way. That was neat. Um, but yeah, anyway into what constitutes viable, useful traps. And it's not looking at specific traps either. There are hundreds of websites out there, websites out there who are dedicated, dedicated to offering you 101 useful traps and all the like. No, we are looking specifically at how to apply it. So what is the difference between a good trap and a bad trap? It's a good question. Well, a bad trap, you might say, is something that they can spot straight away. Well, is that necessarily a bad trap? As a matter of fact, a bad trap that the players can spot straight away, or the characters can spot anyway, straight away, alerts them to the fact that they are traps. So a bad trap is, well, in my opinion, a good trap. A bad trap is, in my opinion, a trap that is supposedly there to entice, engage, and tell a good story for the players, and falls flat because the players can't figure out how to solve it. Now I'm using the name players there quite specifically because ultimately when it comes to traps and things, it's not the characters who are solving it, it is the players who are solving it. And that is, for me anyway, one of the keys when it comes to traps. Is hmm. I don't know how I feel about that because... Yes, the players themselves are the ones who are trying to solve the trap, but in those moments, usually the player and the character are one um, in thoughts. 
Um, usually what you do is you play it out in character to figure out what the fuck is going on with the trap to figure out, you know, how to get past it. So I'm not necessarily sure about your wording there. Um, it's technically everything is for the players. Um, there are things that are made specifically for the characters, but that is because it is for the players to watch their characters or experience their characters going through this stuff. So, like, I don't know if we need that degree of separation, um, necessarily. I need to clarify that it's a degree of separation, because it's all for the players at the end of the day. Like, it, it doesn't really add anything when you say it's for the player in this, in this instance. I think. I don't I might be wrong. One of the keys when it comes to traps is that a bad trap is something that the player cannot figure out. The player cannot solve unless they're just rolling a whole bunch of dice. And yes, dice are important and the skill sleight of hand or pick locks or disable device or reroute power through the trap thing. All those skills are important, but a good trap will require the player to find a solution and then to apply the appropriate skills and dice rolls and things to enact that solution. Not, they will simply roll dice to find a solution. Because otherwise you might as well just say, oh, just roll a couple of dice quickly. All right, you walk through the trap, that's fine. What was the trap? Oh, it doesn't matter, you figured it out. That's what we're trying to avoid. So a bad trap is one that doesn't engage the players or that the players themselves can't figure out. So okay, okay. I, I understand now more of what you mean. Um, it's, a little, it's a little weird just to phrase it this way. But so it's, it's something that needs to be engaging. That part I get. That's fair enough. The, the first thing you said was that it needs to be something that the players... Or sorry, a bad one is one that players can't figure out. And immediately I was like, what, is, what do you mean? So... It has to be something that is logical that you don't just roll dice for. Though, it's okay to roll dice for it because um, you have to make it so that they think about the actual um, the trap itself and how they would uh, get through it. I I guess I understand m more or less what you what you're saying now. It just it was a little weird just to do that before. I don't know. Having the engaging thing is a really important part of that, and I feel like you should keep it with the um the way that they get the trap. I'm sorry that they that they know how to disable the trap or get past the trap. So it has to be something that is at least clear enough that they can understand what the trap is and that it is a trap and not just a skill check a random skill check with that definition then let's look at what is a good trap well obviously a good trap is something that the players can solve but it goes much more than that a good trap is about engaging uh, the players in a form of tension. Now, tension, of course, is created by if you don't get out of this room, the ceiling is going to collapse down on top of you and the world is going to come to an end. Or if you don't get out of the room, acid is going to fill up and dissolve all of your equipment. Alternatively, if you don't figure out this trap, the person that you're trying to save will go become sacrificed. So traps provide tension. They're a great way of, we would call it sand, uh, sand trapping. I mean, we would catch them in a sand trap, as in the term of golf. You simply get stuck there. A bad trap is when the players become stuck there and they can't figure out how to get out. A good trap is that they get stuck there and they're desperate to get out because there is a major amount of tension around them escaping and they can't do it because they can't figure it out and there's this and there's that and the next thing until eventually they do and then they get out just in the nick of time. Okay, your, your, your definitions are a little too close. Um, again, um, because you're already, you, you immediately say a, a bad trap is a one that they can't figure out but a good trap is one they can't figure out but they can 
<laughs> like, yeah, you're right. Like, I get what you mean, but again, it's just... Uh, okay, I, I get it, but at the same time, come on, man. So that's what a good trap does, is it creates tension through delay, not through a complete block because of the- and, and you know, I will say as well, like I was, I was saying that uh, a way that you can take away from the player's resources is their time. And th this isn't necessarily talking about time itself. It's talking about, or sorry, a uh, guy's talking about um, using the trap to create uh, a sense of tension, right? Where you're not necessarily maybe you're tense in my in my case you're maybe you're tense because the fact that you need to get past this you can't progress to whatever it is you're going towards and it has that much more time to become uh, a thing that happens say uh you're going through uh we'll say a, a an underground um basement dungeon right one that goes through that um down at the deepest level of it, there is a summoning of Goober Do, you know, Goober Do, the evil demon who's going to destroy the world um, this week. And, <laughs> and if they take too much time getting past this trap, then, uh oh, he's that much closer to being summoned. Goober Do, bad demon. Uh, he really hates life because nobody respects his name. Don't laugh at it. Um, but, you know, it. It, it does still do the tension thing as well. And I, I really didn't think about tension, I guess, um, when I was coming up with my initial reasons as to um, why I would use traps. Um, but, I, I mean, it does, it does work. It is definitely a part of it. Um, I get what he means. Same dungeon with the tar trap has a flood chamber from a river. It can possibly separate the party, plus you can dump a river-based monster that got flushed into the trap. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I just... It's one of those things where it's like, we're going straight to, kill the party. And it's like, yeah, I mean, if you're high enough level, we gotta, we gotta be careful with just the kill the party traps, though. I really feel like that's, that's one of those things that we don't want to... Unless your purpose is to make a meat grinder dungeon, right? Or a meat grinder campaign. In which case, do what the fuck you want, because you're going to try to kill them anyway. Um... And if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do, I guess. Um, make sure your players are cool with that. But um, just going straight for the killing them right off the bat should be like a l later level thing. Because I don't know about you, but when I have a level 3 character, it's not as fun as I, when I die. I feel like having a l later level character is better in that case for when I die. Just because it, I don't know, I've had time and really it's more my fault that it is more up to me that I died in that uh, instance because I, later level I should be able to handle this. Whereas when I finally hit level three, I'm a character now, at least in five E. Um, I'm a character now, and I can actually do things. Right when, before that, even you're like, uh, I can't really do shit. Right? Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Otherwise, just put a wall in the middle of the corridor that they can't get through, and you've got the same effect. It is demoralizing and prevents the players from doing anything exciting or engaging with the object. So that's the other thing, is that traps need to be engaging. They need to require the players to do things mm -hmm. and to think outside of their usual combat space. So oftentimes people who are playing the more melee combat characters, the combat characters in general, the characters... Uh, well, this dungeon was within the 7 to 8 level range, plus drowning is kind of difficult way to kill anyone in Pathfinder with how the drowning rules work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's totally fine, then. Uh, like, even even with that boiling tar thing, like, you at least had the, the river thing that could, you know, it, it made a monster happen, but it also, like, it wasn't just a you're instantly dead, and, like, um, with, you're right, with drowning, in both Pathfinder and uh D, D drowning is so difficult it's absolutely difficult excuse me um anyway characters want stuff they want to destroy stuff traps are an opportunity for them to use other skills that they don't normally use 
Now, how you do that is up to the system that you're using and your personal style. I like to encourage everyone to think outside of their space. If it's not going to work by hitting it, what other things can you do to change it? Because now I also design my traps around the party. So the same dungeon might have a space that's marked trap, but the trap would be different for different parties that move okay. through that dungeon. It's simply because it's there to make it fun and to let the character go, well, I never use this. This is a racial power that allows me to do X. I never use it. Let me try and see if that'll make a difference to the wall of jelly that's slowly filling up the room or uh, pick a thing. This, this also is um, with... It goes hand in hand with puzzles, right? Like we talked about before, where um, I've said uh, and we've said using or doing puzzles um, is uh, like having the the thing of like uh, having your having the solution um, ready already is sometimes. Um, it, not the way that you want to go because you want to keep things open-ended and you want to make it so that people can get through and whatever um with this kind of thing uh you have to also have it so that your your characters um your sorry your players um are sorry i just got a thing from boo <laughs> it's gonna be a little later it's cool um anyway so um, you got to make it so that y you have it so that the, the characters and the players will actually think about this kind of stuff um, and then reward them for doing things that are different as well because um, they're, they're not necessarily going to use that, you know, what you have intended for them to use for the solution to this trap. Um, as he said, this racial ability does X, maybe if I use that. Sometimes people don't think about that. They just go, Let's just try everything <laughs> and then if they figure out something that's actually like you know interesting it would make sense then it's like oh yeah you get through right like why wouldn't you you know um so as long as you're flexible with it then i'm cool with it and like i like the idea as well of having it so you don't have a hard and set uh trap um you just have it be a guideline of there is a trap here that will work for any party i do like that a lot because then it's you know, something that you can design later on that, that works for whatever uh, party you're, you're running through this. Especially if you do the same kind of campaign for a bunch of different people. So it's about encouraging your players to think outside of their normal combat space, and then it's about encouraging the players to think about combinations of things. Sometimes a trap might require that one player stands in that corner, one player stands in that corner, and the other player stands in the middle, and they all chant together to create a resonant harmonic frequency, which has been determined through the use of, say, history or arcana or the sciences or music or performance, depending on what skills are available to your characters to try and figure this out. Sure. And now that leads me to the next point, is that good traps, bad traps... Use them both because they create tension and things. Don't use traps that stop the story from moving forward. So you. Sorry, why would I use a bad trap though? That's that seems stupid. What? Why would I use a, a bad a bad trap? That that it seems counterintuitive. That seems like it wouldn't let the story progress. What do we? <laughs> did did I miss something? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It's just a weird thing to say. Use both. I don't know. To mislead the party, of course. Well, it, with his definition of a bad trap, it's like, no, no, I wouldn't use that, though. That's, that's dumb. I would call it a good trap if it misleads the party, right? Because, like, then your, your trap is serving its purpose. Then you're doing something that, like, will work. I don't know. Because like, if one, if it's a trap that they can't solve... And that's it, and that's just bad, then we shouldn't do that, I, I would assume. And if, if the way to solve it is something that misleads the party, that is a way that it is solved, so it is then automatically a good trap. It's silly, guy. It's silly. Need to make sure 
that every single time you introduce a trap, every single time you give the players that challenge that there is a solution to it. Now, here's the trick. The solution that the characters players come up with might not be the correct solution. You might have indicated See, that okay. the stones need to be placed in a hexagonal uh, shape because it's a six-sided thing and that's, that's the whole thing. But the players have interpreted the signs that the stones must be stacked as a hexagonal shape because although there's a hexagon in front of them that's got slots for the stones, they think it's a representation of how the stones should be laid out on the floor. Sure. If the trap has been going on for several minutes, say 10, 15 minutes, it is entirely, entirely appropriate for you to say that the trap now is triggered and works, or it's defeated and the door opens, oh, sure. or the crystal stops growing, or however you like it. It is entirely possible to do that. That's Don't be become fixated on the solution to the trap as the only solution. I think the bucket on the doorway thing only for it to be flammable oil, which another trap will trigger. I don't think that's the same thing as what he's talking about. That's the thing. I, that's not a bad trap. Because, again, if we're going by his definition, that's not a bad trap. It's just another trap. That's a good trap, in fact. Triggered by another trap. It does the purpose. It creates the tension. It, again, it's just the way that he worded it. It's, that's my only contention. I, I, think he, I think he's not intending what I'm what I'm taking it as, but because of the way that he defined it, um, that's not, it's not good <laughs> to do. Um, but with this, um, absolutely, I agree. If your tramps are taking too long and, like, it was something simple and they've done something similar to what you need done, then, um, yeah, sure. Fuck it. They get past the trap or they trigger it or something, right? Like, Again, we, this seems to be synonymous with puzzle, because that um, hexagonal thing is the puzzle part of the trap, right? Um, and he said before, puzzles and stuff are inside of traps, so, like, yeah, obviously. Um, but it, it's just, that's... We can, we can differentiate that that is the puzzle element of this trap, quote-unquote, um, depending on what it is. Look at what the come up with and then assess. Could this make sense? Would this make sense? Do they firmly believe that this will make sense? Okay. Has yeah. this trap been delaying them long enough? Are they enjoying themselves? If the answer to that is any of those is yes, then you can carry on and say, no, that doesn't work. But if it is getting to the point now where they've been trying and this is their life, this is it. This must be the solution. They put it in place and click it becomes the solution. The reward that the players will feel for having solved this puzzle is far greater than the reward they would feel as if they slogged for the next half hour mm -hmm. to eventually find the solution. Yeah. Reward the players for thinking outside the box, reward the players for coming up with a solution, and move on. The sure. story is not called Dungeons and Traps. It's not called Star Traps. It is a story that features these things. So they shouldn't be a major thing. And if it's taking longer than that, then just don't do it. And whatever you do, for the love of the maker, if your players have decided that their characters are going into a dungeon, which you have given them plenty of indication, is above their pay grade. It's simply designed to be higher level than what they are. Do not put them in a situation where they have a trap that they simply cannot solve because the difficulty setting that you've given it is 30 and there's no way they can roll 30. Don't do that. And then when they all die and they go, but why did we die? Well, because I told you that dungeon was too high a level. Is that really a fun solution to a trap story? Oh, we all died. Why did you all die? Oh, because well, our characters went high enough level. That really doesn't sound to me like a great role-playing experience. I mean, okay, so I'm, too, I'm, I'm of two minds about this. 7.5 out of 10, too many traps, IGN probable. True. Um, so, I'm too mi of two minds about this. If you have given them all indication, in fact, like, 
and people keep like if they get to npcs and they're like oh don't go up to the north dude bad place literally people die every day when they try to go in there um it's real bad if you give them as much indication as possible that if they go in there uh they're gonna die then they are gonna die right like that's that's just what's gonna happen you just have to make sure that they're aware of this right even if they don't go up to the npcs and they don't go oh don't go up there it's bad right yeah yeah but that was the consequence of their bad choice absolutely that's that's my that's my thought on this because if if you haven't put in the effort to make it so that they understand that this is going to be a bad idea and they will probably die um then i feel like you need to do a better job at doing that because again it's not your decision if they go there right if you say all this shit or you they get there and they see the like once they go into the entrance of this place and they see the bodies right the bodies of countless people just piled at like the front of the place um with wounds that are synonymous with arrows or um fire or whatever it is you want their traps in there to be and they're just thrown out here for some reason if that makes sense if it doesn't make sense then uh, figure out a different way to do this but have it be an indication that people <laughs> look at all the bones exactly um have it be indicated to them and have it drilled into their fucking minds that they are going to probably die if they go through this place before it is their quote unquote time right um if if that is the case then and they continue going through and you've done all you can that's their choice and maybe just maybe they'll retreat again very unlikely because people don't like retreating in in ttrpgs for some reason um it is a viable tactic and also going at a place when you feel like you're stronger is a viable tactic or hiring a bunch of people to go in or something like I, whatever works just as long as you've said that and you've done it so that they can be like yeah it's cool we just want to go in there and see um then it's literally not you've done all you can but otherwise you got to you got to make sure that they're aware and sometimes that even becomes like a hey guys okay so i know you really want to go in here and that's fine if you super want to go in here i will let you but let me just tell you it is gonna be deadly not hard not a challenge no 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 deadly you will most likely die here okay are you still okay with this and if they go oh yeah okay i thought you i thought you were just trying to set something up it's like yes i was trying to set up that you were gonna die if you go here <laughs> but if they if they if they turn around then you know then you've did it if you have to go the out of out of game out of character everything like that um to let them know just because you you really don't want them to think that they can do this because if they're still going oh it'll be fine um like in game and out of game then you know do that but you know if they're like okay yeah let's go it's fine i don't care if i die i just i gotta go in there my character really wants to go in there then you're just like okay let's go <laughs> see how far you get i guess I hope you have a backup. That simply sounds like a GM going, well, I didn't want them to go in there and they went in anyway, so I killed them all. Traps should be dynamic. Only you know what that trap should be because you designed the trap. So by creating a trap that is too difficult for your players, it's just you saying, I don't want you people to get through here, period. And I couldn't be... Uh, asked to try and make the story better for you or more That's engaging for you. Throw in an NPC who comes running out, warning them of the dangers. Okay. Have a rock fall that prevents them from moving forward if you really don't want them to go into that dungeon. But the more you tell players no, the more they'll try and do it. 
Jurassic sure. No. Okay. So I agree with you to an extent, but again, <laughs> there are things in this world. If I had a child, huh? If I had a little baby boy, let's say he was three years old. No, no. Let's 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 level him up. Let's say he's ten years old. I'm not going to look at that baby boy and I'm going to go, hey man, we're going to go to Australia and you're going to go in the outback all by yourself. We no. <laughs> we <laughs> Literally in real life, we wouldn't have some people go places because they aren't ready. <laughs> There's a cave. Oh, you know, people go spelunking in caves all the time. Little baby boy ain't gonna go in that cave, though. I'm not gonna let that little baby boy go in that cave. <laughs> People die in caves when they aren't careful and they don't know how to do things. I don't know. <laughs> it's just... Not sure what the villain would be like. Let me disable all these traps. They're too tough for the people coming to kill me. Sure, yeah, exactly. Like... If you have a big bad, say, I will use Expedition to Castle Ravenloft as an example. They can go to Castle Ravenloft at any time. That is a thing. But Goku did it. That's true. He did. Everyone should be like bad dad of the year, Goku. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, but so... Expedition to Castle Ravenloft, you could go and go into um, Strahd's castle at any time. It was up on that fucking mountain. You can see it. You can go there any time. One, he's not there, usually. Um, because the, the module, at least, it, Expedition was like, yeah, they can go. They can go explore the place all they want. Probably won't find him for a while, um, because it's not their time to fight him yet. Um, but there's a bunch of shit going on in there, and if you go in this room, this is gonna happen. Or if you go in that room, this is gonna happen, right? And let me also say, I couldn't keep track of where things were in, in that old map. My brain was just so smooth. But anyway, just because they're um, I think that adventure was for level, uh, 7 to 10, maybe? Um, now that I think about it. Um, but just if they're level 7, they can fucking go there! They can go inside and do whatever! And, like, sure, you can, you can dumb it down a bit if you really want to, but at the same time, they're just going there because they want to. And usually the, the beginning stuff is like, hey man, you're gonna get fucking whispers in your head and shit's weird and you probably don't want to be here but if you keep going you could potentially get through it but even so it's not going to be any less difficult right like it's all there it's all ready for you to go but man oh man is it not going to be any different usually you could make it work uh, less painful if you wanted to but it's definitely one of those things where it's like, why would anything be less difficult for you in the Big Bad's lair? You set up a Big Bad and you tell them he's over in this country. Oh, okay, let's just go there. Oh, okay, let's just go there, I guess, right? And then they go there and then they might or might not die on the way because fuck, dude, they're level one, <laughs> you know, or whatever. They're, they're nowhere near ready to fight him, especially with... um with Strahd, because Strahd is, like, um, there was a whole thing of, like, doing shrine shit, and the only reason why I didn't have them do all the shrine shit, because I had something else that happened later, because, uh, Strahd was instantly paralyzed in one of my random crit tables by an NPC, <laughs> and so I had to figure out something else for them to do. But anyway, like, he's, <laughs> ah. It's, it's, it's so, it's so, um, it's, it's so not antithetical, um, what's the word? It's reductive to say that this is just because 
the GM or the DM is, like, not, doesn't want them to do something. Like, you can try it if you want, but it is just, like, it's going to be hard. Never precedent the final villain from the start? I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you at all. Um, I feel like it's totally fine to do so. Um, it's just... So, depending on your campaign, you could have it be that people know about what the villain is doing. Um, the, the villain could be out there doing whatever they're fucking doing and, and like, people are getting updates about this shit because they're on a campaign or something. Like, they're starting to take over other places. I meant to say percent, present, uh, again, still don't agree. Um, I think it's totally fine for you to do that. Um, because you, you at least are setting the precedent um that the the villain themselves is the villain right like if if this is what you want to do you can do it it's going to be a little weird it's going to be a little hard to stop the players from trying to do something maybe they don't have the sense to stop themselves from trying to attack the the final villain in that case um i don't know dude figure out a way for it to work i guess um make it so that they don't actually hurt the villain and then they just walk away you know because hell what if the villain themselves let's say let's say the villain is a baron hmm? let's say the baron is um doing a bunch of what is rumored to be a bunch of really bad shit okay has only been rumors has not been politically um called out because again rumors nothing substantial nothing provable but this is going to be your big bad because everyone's talking about him right they meet the big bad they meet the baron at some point and somebody tries to kill him immediately well in that case the baron calls for the guards the guards arrest the guy your adventurer is now in jail because he's trying to kill the big bad immediately does that work yes because the big bad is not being actively prosecuted or actively hunted. They might be um, in the shadows, sure, but the open, the open act of violence against them is completely, like, against the law. Because the law can't pursue this guy right now, and he's not looked at as a criminal. Or a somebody that is trying to be above the law, or, you know, a vigil, you know any of that kind of stuff. Vigilanteism could not be tolerated right and even when they go to jail the the warden themselves the the watchmaster the whatever is like hey man um i understand and like we all know like we're pretty fucking sure that this guy did this right that he's doing all this bad shit right um but you can't do that all right if you really want to take him down, then why don't you go and talk to uh, Spy Master or whatever, you know, who's going to try to like get you to do things behind the scenes, right? Makes more sense when you put in an example like that. Yeah, so that's the thing. I this is this is why the 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 um, absolutes are not really something that you want to do very often in a lot of uh, role playing games or, or TTRPGs in general because like you can make it work. Anyone can make it work. You just have to put in a little bit of effort and make it, like, make sense. You just gotta do a little logics, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it can be really cool and really fun. Um, hell, if you really, if you really want, like I said, if you really want them to be able to fight the guy in the, in the beginning, sure. Or if you want to allow it, then sure, they can fight the guy. They don't win. The guy doesn't kill them, maybe? Um, or the guy um, just leaves because he can. Like, he's not even getting hurt by them, right? At level one, if you have your big bad come and they try to fight him, he just, like, watches them. He watches what they do, right? Make it be kind of menacing where he doesn't even, like, guard, you know? He just watches them as they try to fight him. And then after a while, he's just like, pitiful and then he walks away 
and just keeps walking. Right? And then they go, oh, fuck. Because he doesn't give a shit about them. But they are, they, he has technically met them, right? And then once they've leveled up and they start doing more things, then you can make it so he then notices them and starts actually keeping more tabs on them. And, you know, have it be more of a thing where he then goes, I remember you, right? Reminds me of this pirate game. The main villain, a pirate lord, shows up on the ship you are uh, pressed uh, ganged in. Uh, the players don't fully understand his involvement, only that the other captain obeys him. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Absolutely. And then later on, I assume he's the he's the big guy, bad, and they find out, oh, he's the big bad. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, absolutely, you can make it work. Um, and yeah, this video is blurring puzzles and traps too much. I agree. You're right, Slay. Trust me, this is that they do. So bear that in mind and make your traps fun and entertaining rather than negative and sort of basically just wall blocks. Now, the idea of using skills and things within the traps, it depends on the trap. And some traps are purely trigger traps. So they step into a magic circle and anything inside the circle is safe. Everything outside the circle takes damage. They open up a door, they step through the door, the door seals and it's an airlock and anyone who stepped in and applied enough pressure to the weight of the room causes the room to eject. There are simple traps and then there are more complex traps. Complex traps requiring a whole lot of solutions and things where there's a timer or there's something that's going to happen over a period of time. Those are the more complicated ones. Those are the ones that you want to have maybe one or two of in an entire session. I wouldn't have more than that because it is taxing and it's rather demanding on the players and it does kind of slow the story down. So unless they're in a house of horrors, it should be simple solutions. Now, your players might like solving traps, in which case go ahead, throw in many, many more. It, again, like you said before, very much blurring puzzles and traps because like this, this feels more like something you're talking about puzzles. Because I don't, th I don't think of myself as solving a trap. I think of myself as overcoming a trap, right? Um, or surviving a trap, right? Like, it's something that, again, I understand what I use it for, but how people view them is different. Or what I would use them for, excuse me. But how people people view them when they're going through them or when they overcome them is is different i don't know really weird and also i guess have some it really depends on how long you want your session to be how complex a trap is that you have to overcome i don't know or puzzle or whatever but i would have a lot of simple traps which creates tension so they've got to look out for pressure plates they've got for sensors, for light beams, they've got to look out for runes carved onto the walls, uh, that kind of thing which just has a mechanical trigger and causes something to happen. And then you have your centerpiece trap, your main trap, which will keep them busy for a while. But once they've passed that trap, once they're done with it, then they can move on. I feel like if a trap takes more than one or two rolls, you're stepping into puzzle territory. Well, yeah, I, it depends, right, of course, because like if it's one or two rolls to get past it right it like there is a there is a, and like you said before there is a certain element of puzzles inside of traps or vice versa even um you can have it be a puzzle that um let's go with a classic like yeah floor puzzle where if you step on the wrong symbol um the floor will fall away on those symbols right um if you if you do something like that then it's like well, uh, you know, um, that that becomes something that it's like, okay, let's figure out a way past this, or we got to figure out the the trap itself, the puzzle itself. That becomes that's a trap puzzle, in my in my opinion, I guess, or in my mind. Um, Haunts and Pathfinder fit the trap puzzle theme. It can vary to do uh, to doing the right action, enduring it, using the right spells, abilities, items, or even just leaving the room. That's true. That's true. Um, 
we were playing uh, a one shot with uh, Brogan, known at ones, um, DMing it because he's our Pathfinder boy. And uh, Boo and I were playing it, and um, uh, he had a haunt happen where uh, there was a bunch of ghosts uh, that sprang up, and um, one of the things that uh, Boo's character, he was like an orc, and he, he was trying to do is he tried to like intimidate them in such a way by flailing his sword around and like doing a spin and stuff. It was great. Um, and he did it and they, uh, they, they kind of, they got scared and then he, they, we found that, um, oh, that's right. They were like, uh, kobold ghosts or baby dragon ghosts or something like that. Dragonoid in some way. And, um, we found that underneath this pile of rubble was a bunch of their skeletons and stuff. And they would just haunt for a while until you did something to like get them to go away. And obviously, uh, Brogan was being a little, you know, more lax with it. There was probably a set thing that you had to do, but he was like, no, I like that. Let's do it, you know? Which, again, flexibility, because it makes it more fun. But yeah, haunts are really cool. I like, I like Pathfinder's haunts. They're, they're neat. And they don't need to face another major trap. Because unless it is literally a trap dungeon and the objective is to see if they can get through to the other side, you really don't need to have that many of them. It is a punctuation mark uh, point. It is an exclamation mark. It is a point of the story where they like, well, remember when we had that trap and we didn't know how to get through it and we were so nervous and we had to do this and we had to do that. Oh, and then the paladin had to use his sword to wedge it into the statue to make it. Da, 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 da. That's the conversation that you want to have have around your table after the game sure not okay so we have to come back next week and we only halfway through all the traps in the dungeon cool they wouldn't know that that's the thing they wouldn't <laughs> okay so first off let's just dissect this a little bit first off we're assuming that they one know all the traps like how many traps there are two they know how big the dungeon is the three like you you are so inflexible that you're not allowing them to get past some things or you're not allowing them to like i don't know man like i agree that this is a bad scenario but at the same time how is the, how does this happen with the sense of them going uh, uh if if you're just saying oh we have so much more dungeon left or something like in that case i'd be like fine uh, i guess um if they're really not enjoying the dungeon maybe they don't like the dungeon aspect of it because again a dungeon is full of traps traps are traps puzzles monsters whatever you know like it really depends on how you design it obviously but it can be full of these things and whether or not they they shouldn't know that there's so many more to go and besides sometimes people get encounter one and then they go ah and then they go every corner and they're like ah is there a trap right like it it's hard to integrate them in such a way that's going to make people not maybe i don't know act like they're going to look under every you know tile every few st steps because they're like uh, there could be a trap you know i, I don't know man it's, maybe make them in such a way that they're less obvious like they're they're far less obvious that these are going to be traps maybe they don't have the same traps all the time you know all that kind of stuff If you throw in too many, they simply become this great big mess of solving, solving, solving. And don't do it. Lots of little simple... See, again, don't do it. It's like, well, what if your party likes going through traps? Maybe they like going through a trap dungeon where they see how far they can get. You know, don't, don't just say don't do it. I don't know, man. That's not the right attitude. Traps one major trap that's my advice and um so there we are now if we want to explore traps further if you want to look at more specific things and there are many 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 more things one can look into traps let me know by commenting below otherwise hit that like okay. button hit the subscribe button if you want to join us all right well that was that um 
overall, not the worst video. Um, not like not super, you know, opposed to to everything. Definitely like a couple of things. I'm like, eh, okay, sure. But some things, I, I don't know, man. Fucking. Let's not be so immediate. Um, oh, there's a meme. Okay, was okay. Wait, I gotta pull it up. It's a new meme. Uh, I've been working on a thief skill trial, sort of a mix tr of traps and ch uh challenges that test rogues as adventuring skills. That sounds cool. That's the thing. Like I, I like that idea. I like so. The more that I play TTRPGs, the more that I realize that I'm less, like, about combat, just because, like, combat's cool, but I would rather it be, you know, um, just combat in the sense of, like, being a war game, or, um, or mostly role plays and skills, right? Um, <laughs> this is a good one. I like this one. Um, Where's my, uh, there we go, yeah, um, let me bring this up for everyone to see, but, uh, I, I like that idea because it's just something that isn't the norm, you know, I like things that are less about, uh, fighting and more about using your brain, okay, <laughs> so Pizza Funk made this. Um, okay, this cave is super deadly. If your level 2 party enters this cave, you will most likely die. <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how it be. That's how it be. <laughs> that is definitely a thing. Um, so, that being said, um, we are going to go to midpoint of the episode, so I'm going to do that shout outs and shield talk thing um i get that i prefer more intrigue and faction play for an adventure uh oh well i didn't get to read it uh but yeah um from what i did read i like that too um anyway so this uh episode and episodes uh past and present and future will um be brought to you by our lovely patrons um over at uh patreon.com slash tabletalk dnd um that being <clears throat> draco kraken up at that tier three thank you so much mog zero up at tier three as well thank you very much uh Silazer, also been in the chat uh at that tier three thank you thank you thank you uh steely of course uh at that tier three Thank you as well. Um, Drake Cross uh, at Tier 2. Thanks so much. Uh, and Chris at Tier 1. Frozen Spaghetti at Tier 1. And Kill Chrono at Tier 1. And Polyhedral at Tier 1. Thank you all for your support um, and your continued support. Um, appreciate it immensely. Uh, hope you continue to enjoy. Um, Again, if you want to join it, uh, you can, uh, but only do so if you want to or uh, have the ability to, and or, excuse me, have the ability to uh, financially. Please think of yourself before us. Um, we're doing okay. We're doing fine. We don't need you to, you know, uh, give us a bunch of money. <laughs> we're, uh, we're working on uh, getting things for you guys um, on our own at the moment. But it does help, so thank you very much. Anyway. Uh, meant to say I prefer intrigue and faction play. Sure, the players are strong, but if they go murder, hoboing, or brute forcing through the city, they aren't going to last against the growing odds. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, the other thing, of course, uh, for shilling out is, of course, you can get the logo on uh, a t-shirt or whatever. Um, still have not yet gotten a new design, um, thing, <laughs> pouring my own personal funds into, into Table Talk, uh, is 
is definitely a thing that I have been doing. Um, and uh, when I buy Warhammer, it makes it way harder for me to do that. So we'll get there. Don't worry. Um, again, Patreon money is uh, piling up to hopefully get to the point where we can have a new design or some new other things too. Um, but we'll get there. It's all cool. My chat is connected again. Very cool. Okay. So, um, other than that, I don't think there's... Oh, you know what? Because it's the midpoint, I'll do the thing that people do in videos and such. Um, at this point, probably. Um, hey, if you're watching this and you're new, well, hey, consider subscribing and liking and commenting on the videos. Um... And watching all the other stuff that we've put out. Think about it. It's pretty cool. Um, I like it. Maybe you like it. In which case, like it. You know? Um, there's only, what, 10% of you that aren't subscribed? But let's get that to 0% uh, of you that aren't subscribed and 100% of you that are. Yeah. Um, and quite literally, like, again... The more that I do this, the the more people that actually seem to, um, I I get notified that more subscribers come in like every day or so, which is you know, or every week or so, basically, which is crazy. Um, I think we're at like five fifty eight now at time of recording. Um, I can check. I can check on the site actually. Hold on. Um, because we have that live, uh, tracker. Uh, by the way, we also have a website. Go, go on there. Uh, let's look. Uh, it was up here. I missed it. There it is. And it doesn't work properly in this small of a window, but you know, 558. Yeah. So, um, look, website. Wow. Crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, um, consider it. Um, hopefully we can get to a thousand, um, because literally, if we get to a thousand, we can start actually like posting like community posts, which are super helpful at getting people informed who are like subscribed and don't follow the discord or the Twitter, um, as to when we post things or if we're taking a break or, you know, what's happening. Um, it would be super useful to get to a thousand subs. So please, um, get us there. That, that really is it. Like, uh, I, like going back and forth on it probably not gonna monetize these videos um because one um we do things that uh probably aren't monetized friendly anyway um plus the ads would probably be really annoying um so keep the content free uh by subscribing and making it cool and talking to us and joining the streams and all that kind of shit um but anyway that's enough for all that shills and shit. Um, yeah. So, we're going to move on to the next video um, that is also on building D&D traps. Now, this one might go a bit fast. Um, we might be done with this episode soon. Um, but... The idea... Uh, oh, I got a message. I got a message. It's Boo! Uh, stream. Hello. Hello! Oh my god, welcome to the stream, dude! <laughs> Yourself! Ah. What's that? Uh, yeah, okay, this cave is super deadly. If you're level 2 party enters the cave, you'll most likely like, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, no. god damn yeah it. we were talking about basically just, like, if you've informed your players enough, um that if they still want to go into the thing that's definitely going to kill them, uh, let that them. That is on them. Yeah, it is on them. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, there is Boo. There he is. I um, am here. Yeah. Well, we're done the first video. So, okay. Um, so now it's time for uh, comments. Well, no, I've already <laughs> I've <laughs> already gone through the, the, the middle midpoint and I did the comments in the beginning. You know, we're all good. Um, so traps. Yes. Um, covered a one on uh, that guy did. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, was like make good traps um, that are engaging, that um, don't waste too much of the time. Be flexible with it. Um, that kind of stuff. There's a couple things in there that I had contention with. Uh, 
but wasn't too too bad um definitely you know the main points came across yeah but yeah so uh getting to watch together mm-hmm. uh yeah. hang on one second i am yeah, yeah. uh speak i'm i'm speaking <laughs> <laughs> then uh sorry no, you're good. Uh, you can go ahead and start the video i'll be there in just a second <laughs> sure, 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 sure. well um so this video <clears throat> is from uh let me put it on the screen here oh that's the i can just take hold on there we go cool um so this video is from uh it's i think it's questing questing beasts uh let me check yeah questing beast um building D D traps that players love uh and it is, I don't know, it's like 10 minutes long, 10 and a half minutes long. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know if we've covered this guy before. My brain is telling me maybe, and you know what? But my body, my <laughs> body now. Um, my body is telling me no. Uh, let me uh, check. What was actually. his name? Questing Beast. Questing Beast. We may uh, have, or there are other videos that I found of his that I just had in the document, like, way back. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, the name sounds familiar, but the person doesn't. What I can do is just go questing into the search engine for my descriptions, and no, we haven't. Okay! Okay. Cool. Because I always put, mm. you know, uh, links to people in the description, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, let's learn how to build traps that people love. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. The idea of D&D traps that players love might seem like a bit of an oxymoron at first. No one seems to really like dealing with traps, whether you're a dungeon master or whether you're a player. As far as I can tell, there's three main aspects to any trap. That would be the three Ds, let's call them. You have the detection of the trap, you have the attempt to disarm the trap, and then you have the possibility of damage if you don't disarm it. The trouble is that all three of these things are very boring, as they are typically run in most D&D-like games. So what we're going to do today is look at all three of those, go through them one at a time, and find ways to spruce them up, add more fun, add more engagement to each of those aspects, so that when players encounter a trap in your game, they actually have a really good time. I'm Ben, and this is Quest of okay. Beast, a show about old-school RPGs and the modern renaissance that is bringing them back to life. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell. Honestly, icon down below the the pitch up. has sold me. I I want this. That's fair. Yeah, absolutely. With this series that I'm making on ways to improve your D and D game. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you can join the crew over on Patreon, where you get wow. a whole bunch of extra benefits, right. including getting to see these mm. videos before YouTube, uh, you getting pitch, access but, to the secret um, Discord, and even getting to vote yeah. on what videos I make. All right, so traps. Let's look at the way that modern games, especially things like 5th edition D&D, typically handle traps and the problems there. The biggest issue that I can see is lack of player engagement. In all three of the steps that I talked about, there is very little player involvement. The players barely have to even be present for the whole thing to get resolved. And that is a huge shame. So to start with, you have detection, right? And detection is usually done with passive perception. So it's passive. The game master decides whether you even see the trap or not. The player is not involved. Then you have detection. You know, I that actually brings up a very interesting point because passive perception in Five E is something that I fucking forget about all the time. Yeah, because it's not really something that we ever use. We always do rolls for it because I yep. prefer to do rolls for it. Yeah, like excuse me. I understand passive perception being so, like it is good in a sense of like revealing some things that you as the player like or sorry that your character will notice more so than the other characters right because you have a higher passive perce perception um yeah. like if you are say in a like going to a new town and you go through the the gates and the person with their 20 passive perception because they have the the feet that gives them observant uh i think it is and um and that gives them the plus like 10 or whatever and so they uh they're looking around and like you give them specific details that maybe is like more of a hook right so that they can like see that kind of stuff or maybe notice some shady shit that's going on or something you know give them all that kind of stuff that they can use that that rewards them at least for um it rewards the fact that they took that feat 
in yes. that case. Um, more so, and kind of rewards those who naturally have that because of the way they place their stats. Yes. Um, oh, and by the way, I'm clipping shit out of a sprue. You're good. So. Don't worry. I was doing that. I'm literally going to go back to doing that later. <laughs> I'm building tomb blades. Nice. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Um, but by the way, I, totally aside, but the oh. fucking, uh, what is it? The, I think it's the Tesla cannons. They're um, bullshit, aren't they? Or are so they bad? The, no, they're good. They, oh, okay, yeah, because I remember you using them. I'm like, fuck me. They're assault. So, well, this is the thing. I've never used good, like, uh, tomb blades, but they're assault four <laughs> and uh, just um, straight four. Assault four and uh, on sixes, they do two additional hits. Okay. They're a little orky, which is fucking sick. Yeah, they're very orky. Um, but I also found that there is a stratagem that you can use for Tomb Blades that's 1 CP that makes it so they ignore um, the advanced penalties for assault weapons. Damn. Yeah. So, and so I are hitting on, like, fours? Uh, I think... Threes. Let me... I think they hit on fours. Yeah, let me look right now. Because for such a fast unit, that would be terrifying. No, it's threes. Yeah, it's threes. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's usually fours because of advancing, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. 40k aside. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so... Um, anyway, passive perception. Yes, so passive perception is one of those things where I understand it for some things, sure. Yeah. But for something like these traps and such, usually, like... I mean, I, it makes it, and I don't use this term lightly, but it makes it feel a little video gamey, right? Where, mm -hmm. y you know, you've played the, 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 the closest one that I remember that is of late was, um, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire okay. that I was playing with Brogan. And, mm -hmm. um, who? with, with no net ones, um, oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> But Go yes, on. <laughs> so oh, now that I've addressed him properly, um, <laughs> so uh, we were playing that. And um, one of the things that you get is if you have a high perception, you notice traps and they get highlighted. Right. And then you yes. can disarm them. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's just the way that video games are so that you mm -hmm. don't just walk into traps because there's no way for you to really do that in a way that's more organic. Right. Yes. That, um, that also happens in Divinity. Yes, that's right. That also happens. To uh, me. You're in right. Divinity, and uh, it's not just traps in Divinity. It is mm -hmm. also uh, treasures mm -hmm. and shit you can dig up. Same thing in 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 uh, pillars. So, mm -hmm. um, so that kind of stuff. Like, I understand why that's implemented because it's supposed to make it so that it's easier for them to maybe avoid a trap and they don't just get it face first into it. Um, yes. It also makes it so the DM doesn't like break the immersion and go, okay, roll me a perception. Right, mm -hmm. I I get that, but it feels very video gamey to me just because that's been a staple. Yeah, right? and my thing is that if I am if I'm gonna put a trap in a dungeon in Five E, I'm not even gonna let that be perceivable by passive perception. Right, because the whole point of a trap is that people are supposed to not notice it; they're supposed yep. to fall in. It's yep. not gonna be something that you just happen to notice unless you have a ridiculous passive perception. That's fine. Yeah, yeah Like, if yeah. you have, like, a 20-plus, fine. Yeah, And sure. you have, like, dark vision or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, even then, I would probably combine a high passive perception with a high intelligence, because it's like, sure. okay, I'm looking at this area. This looks like a place where there could be a trap. Right. The other thing is, like, hey, yeah, um, my my passive perception makes it so I, I notice this place that I've never been in before. This one thing is out of place. Yes, right? exactly. Where it's like, with that intelligence thing, that, that makes more sense to me. Um, mm. And boulders get three to a degree? I bet, yeah. Um, yeah, probably. Hey, Steely. Uh, Steely y, y, y ahora mi mismo el luchador de las mesas Steely. <laughs> uh -huh. um, my Spanish may be crap, and I should probably be ashamed of myself. Um, <laughs> uh, I am here right now. Or... I, I sorry, mismo, mismo. Is that I arrive? I I don't know. Um, I don't know mismo. Can we stop confusing our only tan person? <laughs> um, but the 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 fighter of the the tables, Steely. <laughs> ah, I like that at the end. Um, nice. Good to finally make it again. Yeah. No, good to see mm. it. Um, but yeah. So passive perception is one of those things that that is weirdly like 
I also feel like most people don't even think about it anyway. Yeah, most people don't. Right. Uh, actually, actually, you know what's funny? Now that you mm. mention it, uh, I'm watching Joe Cat's uh, campaign that's going on right yeah. now, and uh, he uses it. Yep. Yeah. Which is funny now that you mention it, but yeah. And he uses it fine. He seems like a pretty, he seems like sure. a fine DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't surprise me. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. If you think about it and you can actually incorporate it, like, more power to you. Like, for me, yeah. my brain is stuck in the old ways. <laughs> yeah, right? I, and plus, I don't like, I like rolling dice. Yeah, I'm also, I I'm don't want to have that. an effect where it's like, I, so, okay. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it sometimes where mm -hmm. I'm like, I'd like to cook. And I have this feat. I have all these skills. Sure, I sure, have sure, the sure. tools. Can I just cook a decent meal? Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, yeah, sure. You can just take 10 or do something or whatever. Right. Taking 10 was the thing before. Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, it was taking 10 or taking 20 or however much. Even then, I never did it. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate the ability to do that. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But regardless, I still want to roll dice like 99% oh, of the time. Well, so this is this is the other thing about it. Like with with those kinds of checks, I feel like it's reasonable for you to assume if you're proficient in a skill, right? Yeah. You you are able to do very simple shit. Yes, exactly. That is determined by that skill. Like, there's <laughs> no need for me to make you roll to make um a a tiny like a sandwich right like yeah <laughs> like i could i mean hell because it's I fun remember, sometimes <laughs> yeah i remember when we fucking um when sign in devils and dice was trying to make some tea and then uh i said do you even want to roll right and he right, said right, right, right. yes and that was when he rolled the fucking one Right. Or the two oh, or whatever. And he made poison yeah. cooking. Yeah, and yeah. because it was so bad, I gave you fucking poison. Yeah, like weapon that's right. poison. That's right. Um, so even if you fuck it up, it usually responds, at least with me, because I'm I'm way too generous. I'm too nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shut up. Um, it usually winds up with something good. And right. off every time, something funny. Sure. Yeah. Um. Take 10 and you get one good meal along with eight doses of deadly poison as a bonus. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so I, I understand, like, I, I'm honestly behind this guy with passive perception being like, hey, that's not great. Yeah, um, certainly not for traps. Not for that's traps. That's why, again, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't even allow it to be seen with passive perception. Because that's another thing. Mm. Why would I take the time of putting a trap in a dungeon mm -hmm. if my players just automatically see it what the hell is the point mm -hmm. well the, okay so <laughs> another part of passive perception talking about that actually um yes one of the characters in my wednesday games um before he was retired um uh, he had a passive perception of like 20 right uh -huh. um because he took that feat and his regular perception was like a plus like five like that was it right and he was always like why would I ever roll for my perception then? You know, if my passive perception is always going to be 20 every time, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's just another thing that confuses me because it's like, I well, so like I understand it's supposed to be for things that aren't active things, right? Like you can't use passive perception in the middle of a battle, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, so I'm sure some thing. people are like, well, <laughs> So that's the thing. You're supposed to for um, stealth. <laughs> ah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's what you're supposed to use it for. But even so, I'm just like, it's crazy. I don't know. How did you notice that? Ah, you're just really aware, I guess. Neat. Cool. Yeah. I, I don't uh, know. Yeah. But it's also like, it comes to that point of like, in out of combat, why would I ever roll perception? <laughs> mm hmm with a dexterity ability roll, and that's about it. And it's pretty clear that that's what you have to do. There's not a lot of choice in the matter. That's just how you disarm a trap. You roll the die, maybe you get advantage if you're a thief, and that's about it. And then finally, damage. If you didn't resolve the trap correctly, then you take some damage, usually not very much, and then you simply continue on your way. It's almost like a script that just kind of plays out, sure. and the player doesn't have to be involved. In theory, the Dungeon Master could do all of those steps for them, and just continue on. Sure. What I'm trying to do here is get players involved. Would that be scary? In you walk into a dungeon, the, the dungeon master just says, okay, hang on, roll some dice. And then everybody's like, okay, what the fuck's going on? All right. right. And you take six damage. What? And yeah, then it's like, that, okay, let's continue. Right. That would be <laughs> fucking weird. 
<laughs> That'd be scary. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, um, for those who have just joined, um, he's talking about uh, just uh, run of the mill, like how traps are presented right now. Um, yeah. These are with passive perception. Yes, passive perception and all that kind of stuff. Well, he's talking about the the like in general. Just this is how they're laid out, and ah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's not very interesting usually. Mm. Which I was gonna like start saying. Well, there are these ways to do it, but these this is an example, and I assume he's gonna get to those. So yeah. So D, let's talk about that. There's really two ways to handle this. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one being you hear this advice pretty frequently to just add more clues to the existence of traps. This isn't a bad idea, but I think there is a better solution. Um, what I prefer to do is just to skip the detection step entirely and go straight to making the trap extremely obvious. In other words, I'm removing the whole detection aspect and I'm turning the trap into a hazard, an environmental oh, okay. hazard that's clearly there and clearly needs to be dealt with. Okay. Sure. The reason I do this is because the whole detection process tends not to be very fun. Some players do like finding those clues and ascertaining that the trap is present, mm -hmm. but a lot of players will miss it and you'll still have the same problem where they run directly into the damage without a lot of choices that they have to make. Sure. You can mitigate this by making the clues super obvious, like there's just blood everywhere or there's skeletons Ooh. on the floor with their heads cut off. Mm -hmm. That makes it pretty clear what's going on. Um, but at that point, you've already moved into the kind of obvious end of the spectrum. And I prefer just to go straight there because I want to put as much focus as I can on the second part which is disarming and interacting with the trap. Mm -hmm. The detecting part just doesn't have a lot of appeal for most people. Some examples of this might be things like taking the classic blade trap, where normally you'd step on a trigger and then a blade comes out and slices you, and instead just make the hallway full of spinning blades that are just going 24 sure. hours a day. So you're no longer trying to detect that it's there. It's clearly there. Your new challenge is, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. So, um... mm -hmm. But... Uh... How are those blades continuing to be oiled the whole time? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm, uh, magic blades. Um, oh, okay. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I know some GMs do perception rolls for the players in secret and even do it when there is nothing to see just to throw people off. Yeah, yeah. There, there is that, that practice. Um, some... Some people do that. And, like, it works. It, that's definitely a, a way to do it, um, just to see. It's magic yeah. oil. True. Um, uh, but yeah. So. Ha ha! I know how to defeat this trap. Sovereign glue! Oh! -ho! <laughs> I found a use! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, and yeah, this, like I said before um, in the beginning, that I view traps as something that is a way to take away a resource. Um, mm. Right, where where either it's a resource of a spell, an item, um, health, or time. Um, yes. All of these kinds of things are some of the resources, there's probably more, that you can take away from a player because of a trap. Um, mm -hmm. And it also, like I said before, um, uh, enables them to think uh, critically and try to be yes. creative about how they're going to get past this thing. Mm -hmm. um, which, with this trap that he has presented i then go and start thinking okay so either somebody's going to try to do acrobatics right um mm -hmm. try to dodge through every blade you know like the matrix somehow you know just like, yes. <laughs> see the code and go through or mm -hmm. maybe somebody um tries to use a spell to spider climb up and over or somebody or web to slow the blades and right them. yeah yeah it could be that could be somebody uh takes a a you know, a bomb that they made and throws it in to try to just blow it up, right? Or, mm -hmm. you know, any kinds of... Or they just are taking the time to cast a ritual spell so that they can not use a spell slot, but that itself then advances whatever's happening by those, mm -hmm. like, ten minutes or so, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, you have all of these things that, that it then can um, promote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, honestly, I like all of those because it's not really it is a trap, mm -hmm. but it's more like a puzzle now. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. Um, when we were looking at, at, at Guy's video um, on it, um, he said, yeah, a lot of traps can have puzzle elements in it. Right. And then it became this thing of like him using the word trap in place of puzzle. And I was like, oh. OK because a lot of the stuff that he was talking about was just like a puzzle basically yeah and i'm like well yeah it, it basically is a puzzle but it's more of a trap puzzle puzzle traps. Yeah, exactly. i don't know dude anyway, yeah, who knows um 
But yeah, it, it it makes you think of it in a different way if it's like he's saying a hazard, which is totally different from what I was thinking. Because mm-hmm. when I think of a hazard, I think of something that's out in the open, and I don't think of it as a trap, but it kind of is. Right? Well, I mean, if you run it this way, if you run it this way, that's true. And I kind of, pr- I actually, I kind of prefer that. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? I would say so too. Because again, like he's saying, um, you don't need to worry about the detection thing. Everybody sees that it's there. Um, yeah. And you don't need to worry about um, it being non-engaging, where they can just, like, you know, do one thing of, like, eh, I, I, well, they could, potentially, like, but they have to think about it, where they go, yeah. maybe I can find a way to disable this trap from here by investigating the, the wall and finding where it is, like, the, the device is, and then, yeah. yeah, and then disable it that way with a sleight of hand or something, right? Yeah, and honestly, like, and when you do it that way, you're kind of forcing them to think about it yeah. because now, you know, there there's no ignoring it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there's no missing it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's why I really like that, actually. Yeah. And I, I like the idea of calling it instead of a trap, a hazard <laughs> like yeah. that, that makes that makes it sound less like the standard. Eh, it's a crossbow behind a door uh, and then you get shot <laughs> if you don't now, dodge. I- I would still, I would have those in oh, a sure. different place, though. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like... They still have their place. Yeah, because, you know, in a, for a crossbow behind the thing, mm-hmm. that's... I don't know, like, when I think... Taking these two traps, quote-unquote, sure. you have the uh, Indiana Jones-style, like, swinging blades in a hallway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you have the crossbow behind the door. The swinging blades feel like a deterrent to me. Okay. Whereas the crossbow behind the door seems like a trap. Okay. If you know what I mean. Because, yeah, no, like, I, if, I you wa- if you're walking down a hallway and you see swinging fucking guillotine blades, unless you really have to get down that hallway, you're probably not going to continue. True, true. Because if you fuck up, you're going to die. True. But if you're walking through a door, you hear a... Ch- and then a crossbow shoots you in the fucking chest. There was no way to know about that. True, true. So I, w- I see that as a more of a trap and is mm-hmm. more um, uh, intentional and, like, malignant sure. than just yeah. a swinging blade. Yeah, honestly, if you combine those two, the swinging blade is there to lead you to the, the crossbow so mm. that you die from the crossbow. Mm-hmm. Right? I, you know what? You're right. <laughs> that's just how I see it because I just see one it's the same thing with animals mm-hmm. where um, it's a it's a snake that hides in the leaves and kills sure. you with its venom or and I'm about to freak you out a poison dart frog <laughs> that yeah. completely advertises hey I'm super fucking poisonous yeah. so go away <laughs> right yeah 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 you're in you're in um, they aren't oiled. They actually squeak really annoyingly, causing 1d4 sonic damage. <laughs> you know, actually, there's a monster in one of my fucking other books that actually has rules for how loud it shrieks and screeches. Nice. Ugh. Um, hopefully the GM has already made sure there is no sense of the GM is out to get the players, but doing hazards rather than traps can help avoid any hard feelings like that. Yeah, exactly. That's, also true. that's another thing. Absolutely true. Um, yeah, w- like it feels less intentional because mm-hmm. it is something that is more environmental. Yeah, and it's again, it's right there in front of them. If mm-hmm. you wa- if if you walk into that, you fucking walked into it. Yeah, exactly. That is something that you see all of the elements. There's nothing hidden for you. And if they look around and they ask to see if there's anything else hidden, you go, "Well, you don't think there's anything else hidden." about this you think that this is yeah. about it right like yeah this is pretty there much could it. be more but you don't seem you might to... like i would say that like if you have a really high perception you might notice that there's like a brick sticking out of the wall in like on the other side of the True. trap yeah, yeah that you would assume could turn it off but yeah 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 but that's like that's just a, that's not like a hidden part of this trap that leads uh, to yeah you know, it being like, oh, actually, when you jump across, you immediately get stuck 
under your feet and get stuck in place and then another blade comes and out die. and just kills you right like yeah it doesn't feel like it's like that it's mm-hmm. and like i like i like how you put it it's a deterrent it's not like a trap it's not a trap it's a deterrent yeah yeah, yeah. um one time I used traps slash hazards uh, was a man uh, doctor boss fight. Oh, <laughs> anyway, um, he fought from a catwalk while the players were avoiding toxic spills. Uh, he's unleashing, dropping stuff or even just cables across the ground. Yeah, there you go. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Are you going to do blades of death that are just going, 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 or something like your uh, pit trap? So instead of having a trap door that drops out from under your feet and drops you onto a pit of spikes, there's just a pit there. And it's too wide to jump, and there's something dangerous at the bottom, like snakes or spikes. Again, it's an obstacle, it's a problem, that immediately pulls the players in and gets them thinking, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to figure out uh, what is here. Next, we have disarming traps. And for me, this is the real meat of any kind of trap. I say just take out ability checks for this entirely. They're no longer rolling, except maybe in very rare circumstances. The goal here is to get players deeply involved with the physics and the practical nature of the trap around them. Have them solve the trap and disarm it through description. Describe what they are doing. What am I pulling on? Am I turning this thing over? Am I blocking this hole with this thing? Make it very practical and tactile. This is extremely involving for players and greatly increases engagement. So so now I agree. Like, I like that. But... (laughs) It's not yeah. gonna work for everyone. Exactly. Because yeah. because everyone, usually at least, some people are really weird, and we know of these people that they exist. They mm-hmm. don't like rolling dice. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Which again, it's fine if you don't. Sure, but why are you playing D anD D? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so so usually people want to roll, and like I'm cool with them describing how like if we find a middle ground here describing how you're going to do it in such a way that it makes it super like the dc is way less right Mm -hmm. um way less because you are getting into it you are telling me exactly what you're going to do and so i just make you roll a thing and you're probably gonna be okay right um that way we do both of like yeah describe everything and i will Mm -hmm. give you a bonus fucking be as descriptive as you as you want and I might give you a bigger bonus, right? Like, hmm. let's let's do it so that so that it it incorporates that because then you have that engagement of them thinking, what would I use in my bag maybe to yeah. also implement in this skill role? Because how how would I stop this mechanism? Right, exactly, and that would also help with the whole like in five e at least. Tools are never fucking used. Yeah, they're essentially just a <laughs> dice buff. That's exactly that's it. that's it and so that can also help with me going okay so uh in xanathar's um mm-hmm. that was the first thing that told you maybe you use a skill with your tools in order to maybe do something right mm-hmm. um to like if you had mason's tools and you had history maybe you then recognize the architecture and like who crafted it and how that was maybe made in such a way you know like it it made it so that it made it more of a an implement that that gave you more than just a buff right yeah um and so with this it's like oh yeah i take my smithy's tools the little hammer that's in it and i use it to push in this spike in order to you know break the trap in order to stop the trap right and it's like oh yeah roll for it fuck it do it you know um so anyway, I really like it. <laughs> um, everyone f- playing a thief right now, screaming at this video. Yeah, well, that's that's why. Yeah, that's why I would have this middle ground. Um, yeah. Can say one time I handled a trap uh, was in fact triggering it. Admittedly, just a very complex bear trap, but I used the throw rock approach. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, that's one way. That's a way to do it. Absolutely. Then I just picked the trap up and set it somewhere else. That the owner had not set it <laughs> or had none set using it to nearly kill him hell yeah there you go absolutely get them to think about the environment it'll get, get them to think about the spells that they have the equipment that they're carrying hey. they'll be very involved with their character's actions and that is one of the most fun parts of the game in order to create these sorts of traps you really have to focus on the physical nature of the trap 
Uh, if there are moving pieces to the trap, how fast are they moving? What materials are they made out of? Uh, how breakable are they? How is one thing connected to another? You have to understand these aspects of the trap so that players can manipulate it through description. Try to break your trap into some concrete parts that are easy to describe and easy to visualize. If your trap is a combination of lots of complex mechanisms and gears and levers and pulleys, you're never gonna be able to communicate that just through description to your players, and they won't be able to manipulate it through description. You say never, but you could. Yeah. So, like, and I understand what you mean. I think that in that case, you make it a puzzle, right? Yeah. You want it to, if you want it to be extremely complex, you make it a whole puzzle mm -hmm. um, instead of just a single thing that they got to get past. Yeah. You know what I want? So have a couple of main parts, have them clearly connected <laughs> to each other in a way that common sense would indicate how they would interact. So players can immediately visualize this and get to work with problem solving. So some examples of this, if you have a room full of uh, pipes that are pumping in poison gas, maybe players can stuff them full of rags to try and block the smoke yeah. from getting in. If you have something like a hallway full of spinning blades, well, maybe go back into that last room, grab that stone statue that we saw, and we'll drag it down here and put it right in front of those spinning blades, sure. perhaps snapping them off or jamming the mechanism. Hell somehow. yeah. If we have a pit full of snakes that we need to get over, Maybe we pour some boiling oil down there, light it on fire, Fix. and then when it all goes out, we just go down with a rope and then try and grapple up the other side again. These yeah, snakes did nothing wrong. <laughs> no, they were just being snakes, dude. Um, <laughs> was it the red wire first or the green one? Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Trick question. It was the yellow wire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, I like all of this. It's one of those things where... I wish I could assume that everybody thought like me. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Because, because like I love this idea. I love because mm -hmm. I love using environmental stuff just to get past things. That's great. Yes. That's always super fun. Not everybody is like that. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I wish. It's because not everybody plays Payday and Hitman. Right. And <laughs> stealth games. Got all yeah. Dude, plays, yeah, that's absolutely fair. Using stealth games, like, has definitely helped me think about how to get past traps. Because it's like, <laughs> hey, I got to get past what these. You do. Yeah, I got to get past these traps. Um, <laughs> so, oh, man, I, like, and that's why, again, like, that's part of the reason why we need to find this middle ground instead of just saying, no, 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 just describe how you do it. Because people are going to be like, can I just roll, please? I can't think of how to do this right <laughs> in which case you go that's that's okay Just, uh, you can roll that's fine yeah um, right it's like you gotta put your foot down it's like no roll yeah i'm actually it's like not... well then uh, it's, uh, well then what i would say is that okay then you back up and say guys i can't do this somebody help right yeah there's also that but what what i mean what i mean is just like one of those cases if you don't want to just like force them to try to do something that they can't even think about right like you, it's true you definitely want to make it so that they're not like super uncomfortable with this situation um <laughs> but anyway why are you playing the game please <laughs> <laughs> um can't role play you shitter anyway. <laughs> role play in this role play game fuck <laughs> <laughs> start screaming at them jesus um <laughs> Uh, I'm actually not especially good at visualizing things. One time a GM I had came up with a complex piece of machinery that I was supposed to figure out. He tried so hard to explain, I never got it. Mm. This, yeah, that's the other yeah, thing, the right? Th yeah, then if he made it too complex, then that's kind of on him. Well, the it's, other... very, it's hard to describe shit. <laughs> yes, that's what I was going to say. Remember, uh, we said it before, what I'm visualizing might not be the same as what you're visualizing, right? Yeah. And Your red might not be my red. Exactly. As as, you know. in, in that in that instance, absolutely. Because like, and that's why we were talking about with the puzzles thing of having a visual representation, yes. so that you can make sure that they understand. Mm -hmm. Um, which because it's hard enough to, to fucking describe a, a mundane daily shit. Yes. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Let alone something that is complex and difficult to understand, even when you can see it. Right. Right. Um. It'd be Not like try try playing a fucking role playing game of Portal. Good luck. Oh Christ, yeah. Um, not sure if you guys ever watched it, but the anime Goblin Slayer shows some great examples of a character using tools and smart tactics with his party members' magic slash specialties. Yes. I haven't I haven't watched it yet, 
Um, one day Me I Me neither, but I have seen some clips, and it's very, very, very D&D. Okay, very. cool. That's good to know. Yeah. It's also dark as shit, but you know. Yeah, which is why I want to watch it someday. <laughs> yeah, because it's basically Doom, but with fantasy. Right? Hazards, whatever you like to call them, don't have to be complicated. What they just have to do is inspire a basic ground level uh, of thought on the player's part. They have sure. to think at least a little bit about what the situation actually is and how practically I would be able to get past it. You don't need much. As long as they're thinking, they're going to be having fun. I'll give you an example of one so, of my favorite traps that I personally had to deal with. So this comes from the module, the Crypt of the Science Wizard, which I have not read, well, but I played through part of it at a convention I was at last year. And the trap went something like this. You're walking down a hallway and there's a big pit. Okay, so we need to get over it. It's too wide to jump. If you look down it, you can see that it just goes down and down and down, perhaps forever. So you definitely don't want to fall. But also as you lean over, you can smell something. There's fumes coming out of this pit. It smells almost like gasoline or like oil, something flammable. So that's something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Going straight across the pit, there is a balance beam. All right, so maybe we can walk straight across, but it can't be that easy, right? And it sure isn't. Looking closer, you can see that the balance beam is on a swivel. So as you walk across, it would spin and then mm. drop you down into the pit unless you had right. amazing dexterity. So already we have a problem here that we're trying to deal with. But then there's another twist on top of all of that. When you look at the swivel on which the balance beam is turning, you can see that there's two plates there. And as it swivels, they're going to rub against each other and grind and create sparks. Oh, down into the pit, that's thus cool. igniting the fumes. I thus love creating that. a blast of flame that fries you as you try and walk over and fall down. So there's Damn. all of these aspects there that are threatening you, but each one individually is very easy to picture and very easy to explain. True. But as you put them together, you can see how they would all combine to create a very deadly effect. It's really up to the players to figure out how they want to deal with this. And one of the fun things do you as deal a with dungeon that? master is- <laughs> uh, Well, I would say, um, depends on who you are, right? Like, yeah. It Jesus. depends on your abilities and such. Like, in that case, I would say, hey, do you got some Sovereign glue? <laughs> <laughs> right? That I would mean, actually work. <laughs> well, here's the other. I guess the first thing that I come up with mm. is have your wizard or magic man sure. cast an ice spell at Put the swivel point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to just freeze it. I was thinking um, have uh, your strong man uh, hold the thing so it doesn't swivel. Hmm. But then how does he get across? Um, uh, the, the Everybody else on the other side holds the thing for him. Fair, you know what? That fucking works. Right? Like, <laughs> maybe that'll work. I don't know. Maybe there's something about it where you can't touch it. In that case, um, fucking... Uh, well, then how would you walk across it? <laughs> <laughs> Fly, damn it. Fly. Uh, you, you guys walk into a room. It's like a big square room, and there's like a circle in the middle that's like a mm. patch of uh, what appears to be sand. And growing out of the sand is a big cactus. All right. So, uh, what do you do? Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, is there anything about the, the cactus? Uh, is there anything? Uh, sorry, what? Is there anything like special about the cactus? Is it just... Uh, well, it looks like a, a imagine like a mm. saguaro cactus, mm. but like spikier, but not quite as big. Okay. So it's, so it's like, uh, it's probably like eight feet tall. Right. Okay. And like, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, sorry. Is, sorry. Is there, is this just, is that in the room? Yeah, that's it. Oh, <laughs> Guess I'll but just, then no, you know, <laughs> Guess I'll you just, go in there. It's like, yeah. what the fuck is this cactus about? Literally nothing. <laughs> the wizard just decided to put a cactus, a cactus in the room right? just to see what people would do. And like <laughs> the fucking far wall is an illusion and you oh, can just walk right through it. There you go. I was just gonna I say, just I made just... the fucking most annoying trap in the dungeon <laughs> hazard, whatever, sure, because they're sure. going to fucking they're going to fucking bust their balls trying to work with this cactus. Sure, you're <laughs> right. They'll prick themselves. You're right. There has to be something here. <laughs> I can imagine at some point they, they just go, okay, I'm going to search the walls. And then you're going, okay. And then you let them like do that for a while. And then at some point you go, and once you get to this wall, <laughs> you feel there's nothing through. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, 
fuck <laughs> because that's not that bad of a trap no it's not it's really thing. not and that's the worst part <laughs> yeah no it's it's kind of funny um <laughs> hey ronald says jump yeah 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 you jump across yeah yeah um oh like the spell jump oh the spell jump as well yeah true yeah, you could do that um Thing is, Goblin Slayer Season 1 is on YouTube. Maybe you guys can do a live reaction to it. That'd be a cool thing to do. Uh, we'd probably get sued. <laughs> yeah, we'd get fucked. Um, yeah. It's already, like, already Devils and Dice is... Uh, three of the episodes are not available in some countries because of yeah. Gintama. <laughs> it's, it's so weird! <laughs> I know. It, it took them a while, but eh, we're yeah. at that point. It's not um, available in North Korea. Sorry about that. Right, that's true. <laughs> I mean, um, it was... <laughs> Steely says, I waste it with my crossbow. True! Kill that cactus! <laughs> yeah! Um, and then the cactus dies. <laughs> you <laughs> bastard. Sar teleports through the cactus, the huge fey tree killing everyone with lightning. Mm. <laughs> yes! <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway. Really need to come up with a solution for them. There is uh, this thought that if I'm creating this deadly trap, I should think of a way to solve it. But no. you really don't. There's Thank four you. or five okay. players, and there's one of you. They are going to outthink you every time. Yep. Really, all you need to yep. do is put interesting obstacles in their way that have a couple of different aspects that they need to figure out and let them loose. They will come yes. up with stuff that you did not dream of. Very and that's true. a lot of the fun. I never come up with a re frankly. I never come up with anything for you guys to do specifically. Oh, I absolutely. just put something in your way and be like, here you go, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's what, seriously. No, like, absolutely. That doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, I don't, one, that's too much shit for me to have to think about because I got to <laughs> build the scenario right, as right. well. And two, I know you're going to do it. <laughs> right, exactly. One and way like, or another. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's literally no reason to come up with a specific way because we will figure out a way that works. Yeah. <laughs> right? It Unless, like, obviously not for, like, puzzles and stuff or traps and shit, but like, unless it is a specific thing, like you need, the, right, right, right. you need this gem to do this thing. Yes. More like it, a story element. Yes, exactly. There's, there is a difference there, of course. Yeah. The last traps is the damage. And this is really one of the easier things to fix. Just substitute other threatening conditions yeah. besides damage to amp say. up cool. the tension and make the whole situation more dangerous. So instead of just damaging the players, have effects like um, the room starts filling up with water, or perhaps the entire dungeon starts filling mm. up with water. Uh, you can have things like a portcullis dropping down and splitting the party into two mm. smaller parties yeah. that now have to deal with a situation or perhaps try and find each other again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can have things like a large... Or, or you're the typical party that tries to destroy the portcullis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, through. honestly, man, that, that <laughs> sounds like so much fun, you know? Right? Yeah, no, it have... does. Fucking, um, oh, what is it? You know, where you have like a dungeon that's designed to split them up. Yeah. You know, you have yeah, the yeah. port. There's two ways to go. Both of them have that portcullis trap. Mm -hmm. eh, you know. Going off. Because this alarm and this loud noise is happening, now uh, monsters are being pulled in. That's exactly all parts that was the exactly the one that I was gonna suggest. The, the alarm for many things to come at you. Like oh, that's yeah. that's so class. Yeah, that's such an easy way to do it instead of damage. Absolutely. Yeah. Like <laughs> so, it's there's it's so easy to come up with better alternatives to just you get hurt from the trap. Right. That would be like, nice. It's great. Anyway, well, huh? You know what would be really nice? What would be nice? If even half of these suggestions were in the DMG. Dude, you're right! Ugh. It wasn't... Doesn't the DMG just have, like, arrow traps and shit? Pretty much. It yeah. just has, like, the classic kind of shitty traps that nobody likes. I think Xanathar's has traps revisited, but I never read it. I don't know how how good, but it sounds like they just went back and they tried to and like, revisited it. Yeah, exactly. Like that's the whole the whole point yeah. of it. So I don't know. Xanathar's like, is your essential thing to being less shit if you've read only the DMG. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. <laughs> Need to run and so anything that amps up the tension and increases the threat level or creates other conditions for players to deal with can create more fun situations. Sure. Um, because the real goal here is to add more complications that players have to make choices about. The game's mm -hmm. about choices and engaging the players. And as long as you can keep that going, then players will stay involved.
If you want to read more about setting up traps and building them for your players, I would look at the books I have on the shelf behind me. So things like Electric Bastion Land and Into the Odd are the source of a lot of my ideas here. There's a uh -huh. principle in those books that the more dangerous something is, the more obvious it should be. And that really sparked Whoa. my imagination when it came to traps in particular yeah. and how it's all about giving players that that way like you will always have the it wasn't it wasn't the intent of you to die to this trap right yeah that that and will... it, it also goes back to aposematic coloring in animals yeah 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 problems to solve rather than just springing consequences on them that they didn't have any say in if you want more inspiration for different aspects that you can uh, put together to make traps, I would look at some of the books like The Tome of Adventure Design and my own book, Maze Rats, which offer huge lists of ideas that you can easily combine to make things that your players haven't seen before. Uh, links to all of those will be down in the description below. That's it for this video on traps. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you've ever come up with a cool trap that your players had a lot of fun dealing with, please put it down in the description below because I'd like to check that out for myself. All right, that's it for this time. I'll see you later. Cool. That, that's the yeah. idea of very oh. good. Yeah, no, I I like that video a lot. That's mm -hmm. a great video, actually. Fantastic. Um, what was that? Que questing beasts. Uh, yes. Yeah, questing beast. Um, great. Absolutely great. Um, yeah. yeah so, really, just kind of it. He reiterated a lot of things that I said before, but he also added the like the the whole having things be out in the open and having that be what you do instead because of like we, we were talking about with the whole fucking it doesn't make it so that it's the dm is killing you no no it's just this was there right yeah. like that that is super important and something i never even thought about mm -hmm. love that yeah because i guess it, it's kind of like uh it's kind of like a to uh tolkien syndrome where mm because these things have been set in stone in fantasy for so long it's hard mm. to think about them in any other way so every, whenever True. you think about a trap in dungeons and dragons you always imagine the pit trap the arrow trap the right. spike trap the right, acid right, right. trap you know mm -hmm. you always imagine them that way every time yeah but I, if you start thinking about them in a more cinematic way like indiana sure. jones or something yeah, like that yeah. then they start to get a lot more fun well, this is this is why I like the ideas of having the the distinction between the terms, right? Where you yes. have hazards and then you have traps, or you have mm -hmm. obstacles and and all that, right? Like using a different word really does help, like with my differentiate it in your yes, mind. Yes, exactly, right? Because yes. um, every time I think trap, like you said, it is because of the whole like that's an arrow trap right like that's a you know mm -hmm. i think of fucking uh orcs must die all of those are traps because they are yeah. there to kill right mm -hmm. um whereas these things and technically also hazards but it it just doesn't it doesn't have the same um connotation because of that mm -hmm. um so yeah neat well um that was all i had okay uh, for traps well, i mean hey you found a fucking you found a win Wait. Yeah, no, I I very much enjoyed that one, um, much more than than guys, just because I had far less that I was like no, <laughs> but uh, again, guys wasn't too bad either. So um, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that'll that'll do it for us for tonight, everyone. We've been doing some some two and a half hour streams lately, but that's because fucking I'm tired as shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting Aiden's been busy as hell yeah. lately. And I've been out working every yeah. Tuesday night until 9.30, so I'm exactly. always late. Exactly. So, There's a whole yeah. bunch of things that have been happening. Honestly, um, I might actually have my job longer than just the summer, which would be great. Nice. Uh, because money. <laughs> mm. Oh, but, so you know what? Actually, yeah. speaking, of, speaking of job. Oh, my God. Um, so, and this can, this can easily apply or, uh, you know, go into the podcast itself. Sure. But, um. So recently, due to the whole, like, everybody needs to go up to 15 bucks an hour for minimum wage thing, sure, sure. Uh, Kroger decided to take everybody, like, starting pay is 12.50 now. Nice, okay. So I went up to 12.50. Nice. And, and that, that was from 10. Mm -hmm. So that's a $2.50 raise. Yeah, which, that's real good. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, but a lot of people in my department that I am friends with are leaving due to uh, just moving and sure. going to other jobs. And sure, stuff. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, makes sense. In 
this is the last week that uh, my best friend in the department is going to be here. Oh. And so I've been kind of stressing out about that because it's basically just going to be me. Yeah, yeah. And I won't have anybody else my age or has right. any of the same hobbies. So yeah, yeah. as I was leaving tonight, uh, I was talking about how it's like, well, the department's not doing so hot. It's not the work. It's people leaving. And right. uh, I'm not going to have friends. Yada, yada. And one of the guys that work there was up there as well. And I was saying I would, if I had to leave, I would love to work at our local game store, which is called Cardboard Castle. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Just so happens that he had their card. No. Like their business card. And like, dude, do you want it? Like, and I'm like, can I, do you need it back? Because if you need it back, I can just right. take pictures of it. And so I'm like, I've got their number. Dude. That would so, be sick. That would be sick. That would be and it's super like sick. Fucking my job currently is like 10 minutes away. That's like an additional five minutes away. It's like not that far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that would be fucking cool. Hey, man. Because yeah. I've gone in there and asked if they're hiring like in the past. Mm -hmm. But maybe now, maybe, uh, maybe they will be. Maybe, yeah. Go definitely check that out. Oh, I know I a, a, a new game shop opened up here, um, actually, like, right up the road for me. Um, nice. Yeah, and so I've yet to check it out, but I just saw that they apparently got in dice, like, in little jars that you can get, right? Like, <laughs> And so nice. I'm like, oh, neat. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, God, what is this donation? I, I wasn't prepared for this. What <laughs> Steely donated. Hold on. I gotta, okay. go, I gotta go pull that up now. Fuck okay. <laughs> Steely. Um uh a fun episode guys hope i can catch more yeah it was good to yeah. have you uh the ratier thank you um mm. the okay. ratier the ratier excuse me there we go you fucking um, uncultured swine i am i am i know <laughs> um me too. actually no i'm not i'm very <laughs> <Quite cultured>. mm. <laughs> uh he says uh 750 buy some beer or whatever you drink <laughs> thanks uh orange juice <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly right like thanks for the donation it's probably not gonna go for that <laughs> it's gonna yeah, go right? towards more stuff for the podcast but thank you um yeah. appreciate it uh yeah. i'm okay with traps uh though i've never been tricked by one so i may be biased also ttrpg traps are neat too i sat on that joke the entire stream oh jeez. Ah. <laughs> yeah i was um, waiting for it honestly fair enough um, but yeah, so that'll do it for us for today. Mm. Uh, thank you so much to everybody for coming and hanging out and all that shit. Um, really appreciate it. Um, again, thank you to all of our patrons. Um, that is, uh, let me pull you up so you can see. There we go. Um, Draco Kraken, Mog Zero, Slazer, Steely, Drake Cross, Chris, Frozen Spaghetti, Kill Chrono, and Polyhedral really appreciate it thank you so much um and again uh if you haven't already uh maybe consider subscribing um and all of that other stuff leaving comments and all that shit maybe you can catch a live stream on occasion who knows um but regardless get us up to that thousand so we can start doing community posts so we can tell you when we're late and shit <laughs> that's really all i want from having a thousand subs fuck the monetization yeah. who cares no no i want to yeah. be able to tell people when we can't do the podcast in a reliable <laughs> way that isn't just twitter or, or discord because not all of you are following that or on the discord you know yeah so, anyway um so you can make that dream a reality um, and all that shit. We're um, probably one of the only people that's like, get us to a thousand subs so we can community post. Wait, why? So that we can fucking use it for <laughs> yeah. like an actual useful purpose <laughs> yeah, and not exactly. just shit posting effectively. Right, right. I mean, we'll um, still shit post, but. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> true. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's it um we'll uh we'll figure out what we're doing next week by next week and we'll see you then mm. uh go goodbye Bye. everybody i died the i died in the pathfinder thing oh <laughs> you did oh that's true before i go okay oh, god quick. damn it i was just <laughs> no. wanting to leave that as a cliffhanger <laughs> real quick we're doing a pathfinder game um we're not recording it but it's fun 
I it died. Will, we'll, we'll have more stories <laughs> like, and really shit about badly. it. Really badly. Yeah, he died real bad. We'll talk about it in the future. But yeah, anyway. Damn it. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.